Okay, I, I want to welcome everybody. I want to apologize for the technical problem that uh, we had. So hopefully uh, everybody can see the new link in the older chat and uh, enjoy this meeting. Um, we are going we are going to have our uh, virtual training number four. It is the last one in the series. It's titled uh, Free Seismic Checking and Risk Assessment for the Technical Management of Post-Disaster Structural Safety Checks. There is going to be uh, eight presentations. I'm pretty sure they are all going to be uh, very interesting. And uh, um, we are going to try and give some time after each presentation to uh, have some questions. Uh, if we see that we run out of time, anyway, we have at the end a final discussion session and we can uh, uh, also ask uh, any other questions we, we want uh, at that time. So at this point, uh, I want to thank also all our presenters, all our attendants, and I'm going to turn it in for the first presentation. Um, so who is uh, going to have the first one? Okay. It's me. Okay. So uh, I think you can uh, see the screen. Com can you confirm this? Yes, yes. Yeah, we can. Okay, thank you. So uh, today we will speak about uh, the uh, mechanism of, of collapse uh, uh, classification that we uh, produce uh, at the beginning of uh, of uh, 2000, 2001. Um, uh, well, soon after the earthquake of 1997 of Umbria Marche. That was um, clear at the time. It was, uh, well, nearly 25 years ago. It was clear at the time that uh, uh, in order to uh, perform from, uh, from professionals and from technicians, of the local authorities, uh, region, uh, municipalities, and so on. Uh, the, 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 the survey on the, uh, on the evaluation of the uh, feasibility of the building, so of the safety check, basically, of the building damage, it was clear that we should uh, have the same language. As we say, the same language and the same um, uh, um, manner of, uh, of uh, evaluating the damage. So <laughs> as we are used to say, um, using a, a Latin sentence, we should have the same modus operandi, the same uh, way to operate on the, uh, on, the, on, the, on the spot. We should speak the same language to give the same interpretation, to give the same evaluation, or at least a similar Otherwise, one of the, the, the best bag of this kind of activity is uh, uh, to put a family under the tents uh, that could live uh, in the safe house, or worse, to leave uh, the family living in the house that are weak and could be, uh, could be damaged seriously or collapse after another, another earthquake of similar intensity. So <clears throat> what we um, produce at the time that then has been adopted by the National uh, Civil Protection Department is uh, uh, at the time was a CD, a CD, but now is a web application actually, uh, has been rewritten all in a web, in a, in a, in a HTML language <clears throat> and now is available on the web as a city as a web application. Uh, but what we uh, produced at the time was uh, a CD, a training CD, and uh, the name was Manual of Exercise on Damage and Practicability for Ordinary Masonry Building. Uh, 
And the idea was exactly to try to put, uh, to share experience and classification and interpretation of, uh, of crack parts on the buildings in order to have the same kind of, uh, of judgment. Okay. So uh, we will uh, skip obviously all the organization of the CD that is full of uh, utilities. There is a glossary, there is a, a, an archive of photos uh, with a lot of imaging that can be a database of, uh, of pictures that could be even, uh, um, I mean, uh, queried by, selected by queries and, um, so there is a lot of, uh, there is even uh, some virtual training. So if there is a, a virtual reality, uh, you can, uh, you can uh, navigate inside a building's damage and to see the cracks and to see all the damage and to, 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 to make, and, and to compile the form that is the AEDES form that is uh, the official forms for uh, agibilità, for uh, check safety or feasibility of the buildings and is a sort of uh, safe, guided safety check form that, uh, that help technicians to give the right, uh, well, the final judgment on the feasibility of, of, of the building, on the safety of the building. Okay, but we will skip by now. I don't know if there is any other time in the future to, to describe the Bit Medea as a, as, a, as a training, as a virtual training uh, tool. And uh, we want now to focus on the, on the, on the set of the CD that uh, concern the uh, mechanism of damage and his interpretation and their interpretation, because actually this is the most uh, important things uh, for, for us to, to follow, I mean, the, 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 the logic path of, uh, of the course that we are preparing with uh, with uh, Professor Titilakis and uh, and Professor Petros. <clears throat> so okay, so um, let's say a few words for definition of a mechanism. Mechanism that occur when the walls. We are speaking. First of all, I have to say that we are speaking about masonry building. So now we will discuss and uh, and uh, and evaluate. Masonry building. Uh, uh, so I, I'm seeing the, the watch that we are late. So I'll try to squeeze a bit my 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 presentation in order not to be so long uh, and uh, and cut time to the next presentations. Okay. And so um, we were saying that uh, so the mechanism that occur when the walls of the wall box stressed by complementary action in both direction respond through the onset of the classical X cracks lesion, uh, which highlight the formation of the diagonal compressed connection roads. So what we believe, what we think is that there is an ideal, an ideal roads, rods inside the wall that is this one, the diagonal rod like this, that uh, is uh, the ideal portion of wall that identify uh, inside of the wall, the parts of the material that uh, is able to react to the horizontal uh, force. As you know, me uh, masonry is no tensile strength material, so it's uh, not able to give any, any reaction uh, and interaction, but he works uh, well or only in the ideal model that Ayman introduced since uh, the 60s, uh, there is the assumption that uh, the, 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 the masonry has no tensile strength at all, <clears throat> uh, so that uh, um, uh, the, the, the reaction could be just only concentrating this diagonal uh, ideal road that uh, is a, a compressed the diagonal band which transmit horizontal thrust of the plane to the lower level. Uh, this could happen for each level, or as we'll see, depend from the layer of the wall, and we will discuss more in detail these. It could be uh, all along the building from the top 
from the roof to the to 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 the to the ground. <clears throat> and it arises as a as a result of an inability of the tensor circle of the masonry, and therefore from the impossibility to transferring of transferring the, the, the cutting effort along the isostatic lines of, uh, of tractions. So that means that when the, the, the tangential strengths of the tau uh, do not uh, resist anymore, so that it is overcome the, the, the limit, the tensile strength, the, there there is uh, the, the limitation of the rows. Okay, and so that inside this diagonal band, all uh, compressed strength uh, um, works. <clears throat> Sometimes, as I was saying before, because of the, 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 the floor that are uh, not cutting completely the wall. So in other words, you have two layer of the wall, one, uh, one uh, touched to the other, but for instance, the but, but for example, the the, the, the floor will uh, uh, is uh, is uh, supported just from the layer inside and not uh, and not uh, touch the the lay the vertical layer of the wall outside the external one. So that means that the two layer of of of, of brick masonry or whatever. Is uh, is uh, actually not uh, one uh, uh, touched to the other, and that means that the the, the, the diagonal band outside the, of the of the external layer can create this crack all along all along the building. Damage mechanism uh, manifested themselves through uh, a kinematics outside uh, the plane of one or more walls uh, of the wall box, which subject to seismic action loses its original configuration. So I want to, first of all, uh, uh, divide these two uh, kind of, of, of mechanism. Someone, believe that to, to, to call both the in-plane and the out-plane mechanism, it's a mistake. So someone say that the real mechanism is only this one, the one that, uh, uh, that is uh, out of plane, so that, uh, um, that is a kinematic uh, mechanism. So uh, many believe that uh, uh, the in-plane mechanism should be called uh, resistant uh, cracks or resistant performance, uh, because the, 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 the semantic world uh, mechanism is uh, for, um, for most, for, for, for many, um, linked to the uh, kinematic action. So if you cannot see any kinematic action, then the overcome of the limit uh, resistance of the, of, the, of the masonry mechanical characteristics, that is not a mechanism. That is just a failure of the build of the, of the, of the panel uh, where the uh, resistance of the materials is overcome. <laughs> Okay, but anyway, we will discuss these uh, calling both mechanism in order to be more, uh, more quick, quicker and more, uh, more effective, actually. And we will uh, distinguish like inside or out, uh, 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 like in plane mechanism or out of plane mechanism. Okay. Um, this kind of mechanism that is different from the one that we um, introduced before is uh, obviously due to uh, lack of uh, of uh, of uh, embendment of a detachment of a connection between uh, the walls and the, the 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 orthogonal walls it happens generally at the external wall so so it happens generally previously uh, to the facades walls uh, of the buildings. Uh, 
uh, and uh, where obviously uh, the um, orthogonal wall should be touched, embedded, connected. But this in not happens always. Uh, and so uh, this wall uh, has a uh, capability to overturn just by inertial force because they are not linked, they're not connected to anything. For instance, we have a floor supported by the other wall, not the one that will uh, overturn. Uh, so the, 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 the the, the, the floor are uh, in a way have the beams in a way parallel to the wall that overturn. So the, they are not at least linked by the beams of the floor. There is no ties. There is a not very well connection between the, 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 the bricks of the stone of the orthogonal wall, what we call a spinal wall. And so at the end, this wall, or oh, for instance, is, uh, is even not very well connected at the floor level. The, this wall for, don't have uh, any ring beam or, 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 what, or what other uh, connection. So at the end, uh, actually, the, uh, the, the wall overturned. Uh, I, I want to show these, for instance. Uh, this is uh, this is uh, a, a buildings. You see this vertical. Uh, you see these vertical. Uh, um, these vertical cracks that uh, denote a, 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 a starting over overturning of this wall. Um, but if you go in the inside, you see that these correspond to a crack along on the tiles of the floor. And you will appreciate here this diagonal uh, crack, but be, be careful. This diagonal crack is not the one, the, the same type of diagonal crack that we saw before, because the crack that we saw before, this one, was for uh, the in-plane mechanism, uh, while this other crack is uh, something that appear because this wall is overturning and uh, the, it has a, a no bad connection here in the corner. So this wall that is orthogonal one start to overturn together with this one. And this crack uh, is uh, showing the uh, lack of a capability of resistance at traction in this direction as the arrow is uh, indicating. You see here this other picture, this other this other crack. Okay. Um, before uh, uh, before starting by 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 discussing a bit uh, this kind of uh, of uh, classification of um, of uh, mechanism, um, I wanted to say a few words. I don't know if we have a chance in my presentation to discuss more in detail this, but I wanted to uh, give you uh, some, uh, some information about uh, which is the principle that we assumed to understand the, uh, the, the response of the, of the Masonry building under the earthquake. So the ideal response is that the building performs like a box is the box behavior everybody uh, want to have from uh, the masonry building box behavior. The classical example is the shoes box. The shoes box without the, the cover is, uh, is, uh, is quite weak. You can, uh, you can uh, I mean, uh, you can damage horizontally very with the pushing with the foot against the wall very easily. And, uh, and destroyed completely the box. But if you put the cover, uh, that it's the horizontal, uh, let's say, um, frame, the, 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 the box is much, much stronger. And so this is a classical example that everybody does and you have uh, uh, heard many times, I suspect. And so the idea is that the misery um, is, uh, is a resistance uh, proportionally to the connection that uh, we can guarantee between the element of the misery. That is at, uh, at the micro element, so 
the stone that are very much connected and, uh, and uh, embedded with the mortar and, uh, and so on. And it's a good uh, tissue. So the builder is very good. And he put the stone uh, in the very con uh, connection with each other and uh, with, the, with the mortar, the piece of good mortar. And with the, 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 the orthogonal stone that connect two layers. So the two layers are not uh, two or three layers are not uh, uh, free to detach because there are some uh, orthogonal connection. So it's a good wall, but then you have to embed that the, even the corner between the diagonal, the, the orthogonal wall. And then you have to put a ring beam at every, every floor or at least in, uh, at the roof level. And then you have to put a level that if is a pinched is, uh, is um, with the tie so that the, the, it transmits just only vertical force on the, on the walls and so on. Many, many of these, uh, as we call vulnerability factor or strength factor, it depends from which side, if you are optimist or if you are negative, but if you are positive or, or negative. But anyway, these are all these elements that uh, describe the misery box. Okay. But this means that obviously the in-play mechanism, what, what we call in-play mechanism, the resistance misery, uh, are the first one that act. So if you consider that you achieve this result, so you have built a very good misery building that is like a box very much connected and linked that everything is okay, right? Nevertheless, it depends from the strength of earthquakes. So when these building collapse, this building collapse when the uh, in-plane mechanism, that means the resistance of the wall that are in the direction of the uh, seismic action, that are the first one that react and the react uh, in uh, in plane uh, overcome the resistance because uh, even if they are well connected uh, and the effect the box effect uh, actually is uh, activated but they are not anymore able to resist and so some diagonal cracks start and when these diagonal start cracks start on these uh, in plane mechanisms means that the orthogonal one lose their geometry, their geometry. And so you are starting to, imp, to, to, to expect the, over, the overturning of the orthogonal wall. And actually, as the statistic did tell us, the uh, maximum number of building collapse because overturning of wall. But this overturning of wall, could happen for two reasons, or because they are not connected at all with the orthogonal one inertially, or because the box effect has, uh, uh, I mean, uh, get so much displacement because the, they, the, 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 the wall had a, a resistance that was not adequate to the strength of the seismic uh, action. And that's why, uh, at the end, there are some displacement and uh, loss of loss of geometry, uh, and uh, obviously at the end there is an overcoming and an overturning. So, in the classification of these, uh, uh, we uh, of Medea, we distinguish in the local mechanism and the global mechanism. So, the the the, the local the, the global mechanism are these 10 uh, kind of mechanisms we we'll don't read now because we go, we will go through each of these and some local that um, are obviously less dangerous but it depends from how those are diffused because if they are uh, very very few on on the building it could not cause generally the collapse of the building but when they are very very diffuse it could even uh, drive to uh, to, the, to the the total mechanism. Okay, starting from the first one, that is uh, uh, what we call a shear mechanism. Generally, uh, is a, is a shear in the wall for action in plane 
we already discussed these uh, introducing the two kinds of mechanisms in plane and outer plane since the beginning of this presentation. So I, I want to be clear about that. Everything I say is nothing special. It's something that every engineer knows. The, the point is that this kind of presentation that has been done many times in Italy to train the technician that uh, supposed to go to give the judgment of the safety of the building after an earthquake is because we want to share a common modus operandi, a, mo a common way to operate on the, on the spot. So we want to put in order and to share some remarks, some, uh, some, uh, some observations, some classification that we share and we accept uh, in a way that we are able then to work uh, the most homogeneous way as possible. Um, okay, so this mechanism uh, depends on the shear resistance of the wall panel. We already discussed this, 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 um, this, this point and uh, is produced when the wall is subject to cyclic complementary action in the both direction. Um, the mechanism is manifested by the onset of the classical X shapes lesions, which highlight the formation of diagonal compressors connecting roads to one the diagonal that we discussed in the beginning. <clears throat> These arise from the poor ability of the capacity of the masonry material to react to tensile forces, and therefore from the possibility of transferring the cutting force along the isostatic traction lines. Therefore, panels to the isostatic direction of compression, diagonal lesion arise, and the edge of the reactive compressed connection road. Uh, I want to, um, to, to highlight that um, in the corner, it could happen that sometimes these diagonal cracks uh, on both walls that uh, that are uh, connected here can create a closed line crack. And this is quite important because this could, uh, could uh, overturn outside. And uh, <coughs> this piece of floor in the corner <laughs> that has uh, not any more the support can collapse. So that this collapse can uh, come up as, as uh, the arrow is showing. And so you could have a very important partial collapse of the building, sometimes even, even total. Ductility. This is a word that, uh, that uh, all the scientists do not recognize to the masonry, obviously. But be careful, they do not recognize to the material, stone, uh, tough uh, bricks or whatever. Uh, because we consider that uh, the, uh, the, the, the brick is fragile without ductility. But if we speak of the reaction of the building in the, as a whole building, in this case, some ductility has to be recognized because, uh, because of course, uh, the masonry plus the mortar plus the connection plus, plus, plus all the other element that connect the building have a behavior under the uh, seismic action that is not straightforward fragile. There is, uh, there is uh, cracks uh, that are uh, at the beginning very, 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 very light. And then uh, they can increment the cracks and then they could uh, create the, uh, the alteration of the geometry, the overturning. So, I mean, before the total uh, collapse of the building, we can uh, consider that there is uh, some, uh, some, uh, some dispersal of energy and uh, some, uh, some uh, dislocation, some, some displacement. So that is a bit like the, the model that is elastoplastic. Of course, this material is not plastic. Uh, but the ductility that is, as you know, is the rate between the limit of the formation at the, at the collapse, at the limit state at the, uh, on the uh, elastic one, 
in this case can be in a way assumed. So we can assume it that uh, the, the, the bull building can have some ductility. Uh, okay. Um, yes, the, the cracks associated with this mechanism can be localized both in the mesory wall and in the plane bands. Uh, in, in this uh, last uh, case, this happened when uh, uh, there is especially a reduction uh, in the horizontal section because uh, sometimes the wall uh, are, are, are uh, smaller to the upper floor and the bigger to the lower floor. But sometimes this reduction of the, say, of a, the section is not appropriate. And so you can have... Uh, the, second, uh, the second kind of mechanism in our classification is uh, uh, is uh, the uh, the shear in the wall for action in plane located lo located only in the upper area? Uh, this can happen uh, exactly as I was saying when there are some reduction of section of the wall in the last floor, or because there has been a super elevation. So this uh, this uh, last floor has been built later not at the beginning of the uh, of the construction of the building and uh, and uh, again we can uh, uh, have a i'm sorry but everybody want to speak with me today uh, i never received so many beers so many call okay and message uh, sorry for that <clears throat> and um, uh, this is less frequent than the previous one uh, then in general it goes uh, uh, but I mean, the, uh, the causes are the same, of course, and um, this could be uh, determined by, we already said, so uh, these uh, by variation in the thickness of the, of the panel, of the wall panel at, uh, at um, high level, at that level, on the, even because, for instance, uh, there is uh, some uh, roof that uh, uh, is, uh, is uh, heavier than, uh, than the floor. So sometimes these two uh, reasons, these two causes could both be present. So there is a, a variation in the thickness of the wall and the roof that is uh, heavier than the floor or sometimes one or the other. <clears throat> the, third over, the, the third mechanism is the overturning of the entire wall. Um, uh, we, uh, we already discussed this introduction, but this could happen uh, when uh, actually there is uh, no much links of the wall, um, or there are some, some window very close to the corner <clears throat> on the orthogonal wall. This wall could be not, uh, not linked to the building by a floor, because for instance, the floor goes in the other direction. Uh, so it creates uh, a cylindrical hinges at a certain level, and uh, all the panel, all the all the facade, I would say, not the panel, uh, overturn. Okay, this could be uh, even facilitated by a, a pinched floor that has uh, uh, no ties, for instance, and so there is uh, an horizontal force uh, even in peacetime without uh, earthquakes. But that, of course, under the way, under the earthquakes, increment a lot and can produce <clears throat> this, uh, this uh, over, over turn. This is uh, some photos with some uh, example of overturning. In this case, look how it is clear that there is no embedding. So this wall was built after this. Uh, but attached without any connection between the wall. So obviously the first thing is that uh, you will create, uh, the, 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 the under the, the, the earthquake, it will it, uh, create a vertical uh, uh, cracks that uh, denotes that this wall is uh, starting to overturn. But even the opening, as uh, we said, uh, the opening uh, like this, uh, this door, 
quite close to the to the corner could uh, could uh, create uh, some uh, possible cracks that overturn. Okay. The overturn uh, of, could be even not total all the facade, but could be over partial. In this case, uh, happens generally uh, at the last floor, uh, where uh, you can find uh, some close line of cracks, where there are. Uh, you see uh, these uh, this line that is clearly, um, I mean, uh, close and connecting the the openings because there are uh, frequent openings. Uh, for instance, here, there is a, a pinched floor. Uh, I mean, there are many, many things that, uh, that uh, concur to this kind of, uh, of a mechanism that we have seen uh, uh, in Italy many, many times. So this is a out of plane mechanism like the previous two mechanisms, however, the, uh, the, the physics of this is different. We call this an instability vertical mechanism of the wall because uh, uh, we have uh, not just one vertical, one horizontal edge like this, or like, uh, like this one, you see? No, uh, and this mechanism is uh, what we call inertial mechanism. So is uh, the weight, and the mass of the buildings that is not connected. And because the ground is shaking cyclically, these walls tend to overturn. Okay. In this other case, um, it's different. With the mechanism that we have is a three inches mechanism. Okay. Three horizontal cylindrical inches. And uh, this is uh, the interpretation of this mechanism is when uh, there is, uh, uh, let's say, a heavy, heavy floor at the, at the medial state, for instance, like this, and you could uh, appreciate these, uh, these overturning that is uh, due to the fact that basically this wall is very well connected all around in the, in the, in the I mean, um, in the in the last floor at the basement along along the 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 look look this this is clear in this picture this is clear this is a, a classical uh, a classical instability so there is an anchor an increment of vertical loads okay because this box tend to overturn all the box so there is a strength like this and a strength like this and this means that at the end, the wall has to support more vertical load, apart all the, all the floor, all the vertical action. And for this reason, these um, create a, a, an instability of the wall um, that is uh, well connected all around but uh, there is an increment of wall and obviously this is facilitated by the shaking of the floor that created these, uh, these collapse uh, uh, of uh, overturning of the wall. The bending wall collapse is another kind of overturning collapse, but this is due to horizontal bending. If you have an horizontal bending that is, for instance, facilitated in some cases by vertical uh, uh, partitions like this one, uh, obviously the, 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 the masonry is not capable to react uh, with the bending, uh, the horizontal bending, you see, on the, on the, on the section. This uh, is, uh, is uh, not capable to, 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 to be, uh, to, to react. There is uh, an arch effect inside the thickness of the panel that you can imagine is uh, very weak because uh, the thickness of the wall is not so much. And because it cannot react to the bending because there are the tensile uh, strength outside uh, in, the, in the external part of the wall that cannot be absorbed by any, any, any uh, tensile strength material, 
there is an overturning. And the overturning of this kind of a such like this. So it's a triangular, triangular, uh, I mean, uh, uh, cracks that overturn the, 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 the wall. So there is a vertical hinges and the two diagonal hinges. <coughs> so as you can uh, observe, you have a, <coughs> sorry, but. Julio, I am sorry to interrupt. Uh, can we speed it up a little bit because uh, we are off time? Ah, okay. Thanks. Okay, this horizontal plan sliding is when uh, there is, uh, when it, uh, it happens, when there is a sliding along the floor connection. For instance, there is a super elevation of the floor. There is a very, a very, is not connected this, uh, this floor to the following, to the, the one that is uh, in, the, in the lower uh, floor. And these obviously uh, create this sliding. It's something that un until you don't see, you don't believe, but, uh, but Believe me, it happens. Foundation failure in the corner. This is the classical cracks, diagonal cracks, due to uh, some uh, some um, failure in the in the subsidence of uh, in the corner in this case. And these diagonal cracks converging. As you see, we have a many diagonal kind of cracks. This one the previous one like this and so on. But not all of these are uh, resistance cracks, the one that we shear type cracks that we introduced at the beginning. But the, the reason could be different and these cracks could be due to, to other kind of, uh, of, of resistance. This is when the subsidence happen not in the corner, but in the middle of the world. And uh, you see, this is a diagonal, cracks, little diagonal cracks converging up to the uh, uh, top floor. And this is a classical arch effect. So because this part of the ground is coming down, you have uh, this kind of arch effect that uh, you see is, uh, is so that, that's why we say that the misery is an adaptive uh, structure, is an adaptive material. The masonry building is an adaptive structure. The diagonal is the way in which the 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 the, 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 the masonry speak to us and tell us some problem. This doesn't mean that uh, he is collapsing. It means simply that he has reached another equilibrium set, condition, configuration, and sometimes this new configuration is still safe. So it depends to understand if this kind of uh, phenomenon are ongoing or are, have been stopped after the uh, adaptation of a new equilibrium configuration of the misery like this show. This is a uh, simple because this is uh, for a structure adjacent that, uh, that could be, uh, I mean, um, uh, have a different, uh, um, this, uh, I mean, oscillation for different period of uh, oscillation. For instance, this is masonry and this is reinforced concrete. The small one could be steel or reinforced concrete so that you have the hammering effect for uh, uh, this uh, differential uh, displacement in the oscillation under the earthquake. This is because uh, some th th these other mechanism <coughs> is the shift of the, of the beams inside the hole uh, of the supporting wall. This is because the beams are not very well connected and linked to masonry. And this, as you see in the picture, can create the collapse of the floor. And sometimes the collapse of one floor will produce the collapse of all the floor, because obviously the dynamic impact of the floor that uh, collapse on the floor uh, 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 downstairs underneath uh, create the, the, a series of collapse of all the floor up to the ground. <clears throat> if we go to the local mechanism, this is a collapse of a lintel and or a platform 
uh, this could happen because there are sometimes some reduction of the thickness of the wall where there is the window <clears throat> uh, to facilitate the use of the window from the people. And, uh, and this uh, gave a weak point here and the classical shear type uh, diagonal cracks appear. Um, okay, in the case of the arch, the, uh, the, 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 the cyclic um, action uh, of, the, of the earthquakes could create even some shift of some stones of the arch, like you see here, up to the collapse of the, of the arches. <laughs> Um, some uh, material irregularities, local weakness, uh, people do the, people do everything on the masonry building. Close opening, open other other windows with different materials. So all uh, oh, they cut these for uh, for the simony. Uh, they want the camino somewhere and they cut all the wall from the top to the bay to, to the ground for the simonies and these obviously, create a, a great discontinuity and a weak point. <clears throat> An overturning of a tympanum wall, that is this, that sometimes happen as you see in the picture, could be determined by the lack of adequate connection to the orthogonal walls and roof, and that could be facilitated by a cyclical hammering effect of the ridge beam of the roof uh, that um, is uh, not uh, uh, connected uh, uh, properly, uh, and uh, especially when uh, these uh, ridge beam are considerably uh, big and, uh, the, and uh, the, the weight is quite huge. <clears throat> Overturning of the upper part of the cantonal, this one, this could happen, uh, uh, is determined by the lack of adequate connection, as always, in the external orthogonal wall, and it is facilitated by possible trust of the roof, especially the hipper one, pushing strut resting of the angles because there is this beam that push straight on the diagonal on the, on the upper part of the corner. And these uh, uh, obviously facilitate the rotation, especially if there are some window very close to the corner. <clears throat> These other happen uh, for the attic strip. Sometimes we have a lot of window, very, very weak, short, and not much thick uh, wall uh, here. And uh, the roof uh, uh, has, uh, is a pinch, that is an a very important horizontal uh, strength, is determined by lack of adequate connection to the ort or orthogonal wall of the roof and so under the cyclic effect hammering this wall you can have an overturning of these and this is another typical action that create overturning of this wall finally the last one <coughs> the rotation of uh, of um, bolts and arch uh, the, the the shoulders are uh, uh, the important uh, uh, part of the resistance of the arch, because if the, if the wall supporting the arch will not uh, overturn, this was uh, one of the the first uh, uh, assumption of uh, of Ayman in the the, the the safety of safe of a safety arch uh, that is. Uh, a memorable paper, and then it became a book that I suggest to everybody. Uh, in in the sixties was the, the 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 theory of Ayman and these are six, and and these are still valid. <clears throat> you cannot have these uh, these um, collapse. The collapse is due to the opening hinges, as you see. But the, the space to create the opening hinges is because the supporting wall overturned. This is an example and some test on the shaking tables done in Italy when we realize that the presence of the tie of an arch can increment three times the resistance of the arch under the earthquakes. Okay, this is a, some, some picture. Okay, and this is the right. 
So, uh, Petros, uh, do I go uh, straight for the following one? Uh, yes, I, I have to apologize for the delay we start, so that we are ca playing catch up uh, with time. Uh, I just want to mention that there was a notice on the chat from a colleague, uh, Tiadis Ayotis, uh, related to this uh, presentation. Uh, yes, I think we can uh, go ahead, uh, Julio. And uh, oh, if we have me, questions, me, we can which, ask which at is, the end. Which is the, 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 the time I have? How, how many minutes? Uh, we're supposed to have uh, 30 minutes for each presentation. So any time less, it's a gain. <laughs> okay. Okay, I'll try to go quick. Yes, please. Thank you. Okay, we want to say something about the mechanism and uh, the Medea reinforcer concrete <coughs> uh, manual train. Okay, so uh, the, the reinforcer concrete mechanism uh, has been uh, classified uh, in the global and uh, and the local as the one that we saw in the in the in the misery um so i'm sorry if my presentation will be will be quick because you know we are um, we are uh, short in time but anyway this presentation will be available so you can study this and i am available to any future possible uh, discussion okay we have a strong beam and weak pillar weak uh, weak beams and strong pillar mechanism weak nodes, weak floor, and foundation failure. This is basically the, uh, the, the, the main classification of the, uh, of the mechanism due to uh, reinforcer concrete. Then there are the local mechanisms. <clears throat> this is due to the structural parts, to infill partitions, and the collapse of roof. I don't want to now to read, this is in Italian, I'm sorry, but they will go one by one quickly. Then we have another family of mechanism that is mechanism on walls, because as you see, the reinforced concrete buildings are not always done by uh, a frame of, uh, of a pillar and, and beams, but can be, uh, uh, associate to the wall, what we call in Italy the seismic wall. Uh, so we have done uh, some classification even for wall. So I'm sorry if I go very quick, but actually there are many different cases. <clears throat> okay, the mechanism of strong beams and weak pillar, of course, in the building characterized by beams of a high strength, on pillar of significantly lower resistance. So to be understood in their relative relation with respect to the request deriving from the application of seismic action. <clears throat> the development of a, of a plasticization of a pillar weaker, prevent the formation of plastic hinges in the beam stronger and determine the concentration of inelastic deformation in the pillar themselves <clears throat> this is the kind of mechanism that in the Euro code is not uh, accepted in a way, because this uh, is uh, uh, a weaker form of the building. Because you can understand that uh, it uh, that if just one floor create the hinges at the bottom and at the top of the pillar, the building is collapsed. So uh, that's why uh, the, this is very unfavorable, um, unfavorable uh, and this uh, is generally not what we like and we'll try to avoid. This is some picture that I, uh, I shoot in, uh, in uh, Izmit in Turkey, Izmit uh, earthquakes. <clears throat> you can see this clear mechanism uh, of a weak pillar and the strong beams is very clear. And uh, you see, uh, 
uh, if it happens just at one floor, all the building collapse. This is a pancake collapse, but uh, you uh, can, uh, I mean, assume that it's the same kind of mechanism of weak. Uh, obviously, uh, that could be that that could say many things. Correct sizing of pillar can counteract an onset of this mechanism, as well as other constructive measure such as uh, good stirrup near the nodes uh, that increase the ductility of the pillar and the placement of strong collaborating in fields. But of course, this is now it's no time to go in detail, but just few flash. Weak beams mechanisms of strong pillars is, uh, is uh, the other one, the opposite one. <clears throat> you see that uh, in this case, the pillar remain standing. And this is good because uh, the total collapse happen when uh, all hinges at all happen on the, on, the, on the beams that could be of different type for bending, for uh, remo uh, removing, uh, uh, reinforcement for shifting of, of uh, the reinforcement within the beams or for shear in the beams. But anyway, a part which is the action that create the cracks, the failure in the beams, the, 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 the most important concept is that the beam remain, that the pillar remain standing <clears throat> and with them, and with them old building up to the end, when all the beams failure, so a lot of energy has been dissipated. And at the end, hinges appear at the bottom of the pillar in order to have the total collapse. So can you understand easily that this kind of approach means that you are dissipating a lot, a lot of energy, and this is the best performing that you can ever from the reinforcer concrete. <clears throat> uh, okay, I, I promised that I was quick. Uh, so this is, uh, as I said, uh, the two different uh, uh, mechanisms for uh, strong pillars. <clears throat> but of course, you can have a, a different uh, inches formation by bendings or by, by shear. We can see here some example of this. <clears throat> okay. Uh, look, this is all shear cracks on the beams. Uh, and as you see, <clears throat> these buildings are collapsed. Anyway, they are more or less still standing. That means that people inside probably are still alive. This is another example of a, of a shear. This is Turkey as well. Okay, another kind of, uh, of a kind of mechanism is for weak nodes. It occurs when the structural frame is characterized by nodes that are not very resistant compared to the stress transmitted in the beams and the pillar. Uh, in this regard, the strength of the nose is essentially linked to the resistance to the cutting action, to the shear action. Uh, that uh, develop inside the node due to tensile and the compression stresses transmitted by the enforcement of beam and the pillar of the node. Sorry, this has been translated by Italians through an automatic translator. Sometimes there are not proper words like a cutting. This is a shear action. Okay, I have to. So, uh, Petros, I will re read and readjust the terminology before to share with you this presentation. Uh, the, most, the most unfavorable condition are related to the position of the end or corner nodes that are the, obviously without brackets uh, on, the, on the, the brackets that should be uh, stirrups uh, <clears throat> that which converge beam and pillar strongly reinforced and, and, and small. Okay. <clears throat> the, the failure of the node uh, as you see, um, is a, is a terrible. The collapse of very nodes determine liability in the frame and the total collapse of all the buildings, as you see in these central in central pictures. Okay, weak plan mechanism. You can have in that in that case, for instance, uh, this kind of windows. You see very long windows that uh, in the building. Uh, uh, is, is, is very, very bad because 
this is a very short pillar that uh, have uh, the action of a sheer action of this wall that create a sheer uh, collapse of these um, of these uh, toots or you say toots you know. anyway of this of this pillar that is uh, is very short and so the 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 uh, sheer action is very 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 strong <clears throat> um uh, you have the plan mechanism, as I said, when just only one floor, for instance, in the in the in the in the ground floor, create these uh, hinges at the bottom and the top of each of the pillar. This happen when and uh, uh, in the in the, in the, um, in the ground the floor there is, uh, for instance, a supermarket or you or, uh, or a, a parking. So you remove all the partition that could collaborate. And so in this case, you have uh, this uh, bending and, uh, and the fail of the, pill, of the pillar by bending action. But the, 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 the pillar could bend even for crashing in the pillar, okay? From instability of the bars, of the vertical bars. You can have a, you, have a, you can see here some picture of these, uh, uh, cracking uh, in the once there was uh, a methodology to to design the building with the soft floor that uh, supposed to have in the ground floor just only car or deposit or whatever and uh, all the all the ductility uh, was concentrated in the in the in the ground floor and so the uh, all the energy was dissipated by the collapse of the soft floor. And that was a way in, in, in the past uh, has been designed the, 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 the fossil concrete buildings. Okay, this is Izmit again. This um, look how it is clear that <clears throat> the lax of partition was uh, create uh, this uh, kind of, uh, of collapse. And uh, <clears throat> this is a, a weak plan for, uh, uh, for uh, vertical load, not for bendings. And uh, look, this is a, this was uh, uh, once was a pillar, now is uh, less than half a pillar. Uh, here, there were very beautiful cars. This was in Greece, actually. This was in Athens, this picture. There was a very rich area with the beautiful cars down there that was completely, completely smashing, was crashed. Okay, the mechanism in this case, uh, as I already described before, uh, is, a, is a frequent in building characterized by a free floor where uh, there is a presence of the squat pillars. And these squat pillars could be, could appear even when you have this kind of windows, very, 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 very long and, uh, and very short like this one, and that could create uh, the same kind of action uh, of a concentration of a, of a sheer, of a sheer uh, action. <clears throat> Mechanism by foundation fail. Uh, and this is a classical uh, uh, bending uh, action that increment the usual bending action that has been uh, taken in consideration for design. And, um, and this is uh, the kind of mechanism that you, can, uh, that you can perform. This is an example. Uh, okay, mechanism on the structure parts for hammering between addition structure. This is very similar to the one that we show in the previous presentation on the measuring. Uh, but anyway, because you could have a different structure, uh, even over a fossil concrete that has not an adequate join here, so an adequate space for uh, leave the oscillation, the free oscillation of the two structure, not to uh, hammer one to another, uh, <clears throat> this could obviously create damage. Um, for action of a strut of the head of the pillar by the infill, because the infill panel sometimes could be even so strong 
that could create a crux of shear to the pillar that is uh, at, at the top of the pillar. We have seen a lot of these in Greece in the Aten uh, earthquakes. And uh, actually, because the infill panel was quite, uh, quite strong, and so uh, at the, it created a, a crux at the, uh, with this uh, ideal rod, like the masonry actually, create the crux in the top of the, of the pillar. Another kind of mechanism is, uh, is uh, for a shifting of, uh, of, of the beams. Look, these beams that you see here that I'm indicating with the arrow once was here, but there was not so much good connection between this beam and this other. So the thunder, the, 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 the earthquakes, the, the, these shift completely. Okay, and it goes down. This is the mechanism that uh, we, uh, the transformation from the partial collapse to the total collapse to the total collapse is possible as a result of dynamic effect triggered by the sudden collapse of one or more floors. Okay. <clears throat> Then we have a mechanism at the infill panel of the partitions that, as you know, as we described before, the, uh, the, 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 the combination of infill panel and the frame of an enforced concrete structure is very important because uh, you could have uh, uh, obviously strong infill panel that, uh, that damage the structure, uh, but uh, if it's not strong enough, it collapses and do not help the structure, you know that now in the, in the codes, the uh, capability to give an help from the wall to the structure is something that is taken in consideration. So this is something that has to be, to, to be, to be evaluated. You can have even the, the, the breakage out of the plane because uh, there is a not, uh, not a right connection. So under the, uh, uh, cyclic action, uh, an entire partition could uh, overturn it, okay? So there is an instability of overturning. You can see here how this happens, see? Like in the previous one, there was, uh, sorry, there was uh, the, the picture that to show how this is damaged, the field panel is damaged. And this is in, this in, in plane and this is out of plane. Okay, we can have some mechanism of collapse of the roof uh, for breaking of the load bearing masonry, as we discussed even for the masonry uh, building. In fact, this is strange. Sometimes at the end of the spatial frame or enforced concrete, um, sometimes happens that they build some masonry around and a very heavy reinforced concrete uh, pitched floor. And these, of course, create this, this collapse. Some other times, even when the, 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 the frame of the, of the pitched floor is uh, connected to the other part of the reinforced concrete frame, this beam is not adequate to design it and uh, uh, is uh, not resistant enough to the, the horizontal forces due to the pinched floor plus the uh, <coughs> plus the, the earthquakes action. Okay, uh, I think that I finish uh, ten minutes before uh, the thirty. That uh, that or oh, even more. I I hope that I have uh, uh, recover a bit our delay since the beginning. If you have some question. Thank you, Giulio. Uh, thanks also for uh, adding this a little shorter than. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I've been I've been very very quick, so probably <laughs> something that is not so clear. But I'm uh, ready whenever you like to have a discussion on these. And uh... okay, thank you very much. I don't know if you have any comments or questions, or uh, or if not, then we can. Uh, Go ahead and uh, start the next uh, presentation. Not sure, Evie, who is uh, 
Hello, I, I am the next presenter. Okay. Okay. Next share screen. Okay. Can you see my screen? I think yes. Yes, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> nice. Um, hello again. I am Stella Carfaga from the Aristotle University of Thessaloniki. Uh, we're going to see together uh, the description of the risk risk platform, uh, which is used for the pre seismic checking and the seismic risk assessment of buildings. Uh, initially, here you can see in this slide uh, the context of uh, the risk school system. Uh, um, we're going to see the main objectives as well as the methodology, the methodological framework. Then we're going to see more in depth the risk school's application. Uh, this is a smartphone application uh, that has been developed for an easy rapid visual screening of school buildings. And uh, finally, we're going to see the risk course platform, which is uh, an innovative web platform for the precise seismic taking and the vulnerability and risk assessment of school buildings. Uh, initially, we'll see the risk course system objectives. Uh, the main objective, one of the first objectives of this uh, system was to conduct an easy rapid visual screening of school buildings as well as to uh, have a rapid data collection of the buildings for facilitating earthquake damage and loss assessment. A, another objective was to uh, make some uh, vulnerability and risk assessment of the school buildings, uh, again, with uh, an easy uh, way. Then to, have, uh, to develop school building inventories for future processing. And one of the main objectives was the visualization of the seismic hazard for various seismic scenarios, the vulnerability and risk for the same scenarios of school buildings in a GIS environment. One question that we wanted to answer was where risk schools could be helpful. This school system could be very helpful to evaluate school building seismic retrofitting needs. In addition, it will help to design seismic risk mitigation programs for school buildings, to plan post-earthquake building safety evaluation efforts, to improve the robustness of decision-making procedures and risk mitigation strategies, such as strengthening or uh, prioritization for uh, interventions of school buildings. In this slide, uh, you see the flowchart of the risk school system methodology. The risk school methodology, as illustrated in this uh, slide, uh, is structured as a multi level approach, which combines information coming from, let's say, level one, that is uh, the rapid visual screening data of a building. Uh, I want to have a laser also. We begin from this level. And then level two, uh, that we have the vulnerability and risk assessment. In the first level of this procedure, uh, uh, the, the level one of this procedure may be translated into an application for Android and iOS mobile devices, such as smartphones and tablets, for conducting the rapid visual screening of a building. The next level could be uh, translated into an online web platform for the precise seismic taking results and also uh, the vulnerability and the risk of, uh, for predefined seismic hazard scenarios. The application facilitates the rapid visual screening procedure to identify inventory uh, and screen buildings and supports the integrity of the information through its interface. Uh, the application offers an interesting alternative support to paper forms as it enables a rapid access to various sources of information. Then the online web platform 
is used for the management and processing of the multiple data and information retrieved in the field. In the field, I mean from the rapid visual screen using the application in order to assess the vulnerability and risk of schools. In the platform, the user can choose either to conduct precise checking of the building, which is a first order vulnerability assessment, uh, or make a vulnerability uh, according to the topology of the building where automatically appropriate fragility curves are chosen for the specific typology and for the specific hazard at the location that the building is. Uh, and then we uh, estimate the risk, damages and losses assessment uh, of the specific building. Uh, it is noted that uh, the user can also see in the platform the different hazard maps for uh, the six seismic hazard scenarios that uh, there are in the platform. This is uh, in more detail uh, the uh, methodology. And now let's see uh, more in depth this, the uh, first step that is the smartphone application. Uh, the smartphone application has been developed for Android and iOS devices. So you can find it available at Google Play and at App Store at the links that you can see in this uh, slide. The Riscourse application is a friendly and easy to use tool for the rapid visual screening of buildings. It offers also some additional features where uh, using it, you can determine the typology and structural condition of critical buildings. And also by saving the data collected, they are automatically stored in a central database for further processing to assess the vulnerability and risk for various seismic scenarios and display the results in a GIS environment. Uh, in this screen, uh, you can see the main home pages of the uh, Riscus application. In the first, uh, at the left uh, screen, you can see uh, the list of the buildings here. It's the home screen of the application. Then in the middle uh, figure, you can see a map uh, where you can see all the buildings that the specific user has recorded. While in the uh, right picture, you can see the user account details. Uh, I, I note again that in, the, in this map uh, of the application, the user can see only the buildings that has uh, recorded uh, himself, not uh, all the buildings of uh, the whole team, as you can see later in the platform. Then by adding this uh, plus button, we move on to see the form that the user uh, needs to fill. During the rapid visual screening procedure, the surveyor, the surveyor is required to identify the structural system of a building, the organization of its plan and elevation, its interaction with adjusted buildings, and uh, this kind of information. Towards this direction, the application supplies surveyors with the form that needs to be filled. Uh, and this form contains uh, scheduled questions with free text or multiple choices, as you can see here. Um, also, it can uh, provide um, uh, choices with possible values, true or false, to guide the surveyor in the observation and description of the building. Um, let's see the main sections of this application. The first one is the building identification information, where we have the name of the building, the building use, the uh, owner details uh, of the building. I didn't mention, uh, but you can see the, the application is in Greek. So I make some translations here, here so you can understand uh, the basic uh, choices of this application. In the future, we're going to make this application also in English. Um, in addition, uh, this application contains the building location uh, that is automatically received using the GPS of the mobile device, the GPS sensor of uh, the mobile device we use. Uh, in addition, we have some other information such as uh, the county, the municipality, the address uh, of the building that we enter them uh, manually from specific choices and the address uh, as a free text. Uh, another part of this application is the building technical data, where we have the lateral load resisting system, the material construction, the importance of the building, 
I'll continue here. And then other information, such as if there is pilotis, uh, if we have other information regarding the roof of the building, and this kind of information. Uh, in addition, the form contains fields with seismological and geotechnical data. Uh, the structural type according to ASP method that has been used for the pre-seismic uh, taking of the building. Uh, it's a method ASP 2000. And in addition, some pertinent data related to its seismic performance. Uh, when all this information collected, uh, uh, when all the information are collected, the user saves them and they are automatically uploaded uh, to the database via the mobile phone network or Wi-Fi connection. So we need internet to have the, um, all this information uploaded to the database. There, in addition, there are some uh, um, uh, places where we can, uh, we can add some photos or other notes that we want to add uh, for the building. Um, after this uh, procedure, and if we conduct several uh, rapid visual screen to several buildings, an inventory uh, with the characteristic building features uh, are crea is, is created. Uh, it is also noted that users can use uh, many smartphones to perform parallel data collecting tasks for a highly efficient uh, investigation. This, since all the data or the collected data are transferred to the server. And now uh, I have here some of uh, the pertinent data related to seismic performance that I showed you before. I have in English, so you can understand what do I mean by this data. They are data regarding if they are designed uh, with no seismic code, if uh, the building uh, under investigation has increased importance due to change of the building use, if it is subjected, it has been subjected to previous uh, seismic taking, whether the building has a poor condition due to lack of maintenance or settlements of the ground, if there is risk of collision with adjusted buildings, if there is pilotis or soft story as we call it, if there are irregular wall infills arrangement in plan view, uh, if there is a high building height, height irregularity, plan irregularity, if there is torsion uh, potential, and if there are short columns uh, in the building. These are uh, specific details of the building that may uh, have it uh, more vulnerable. Um, and let's move on to see uh, the web platform for the precise checking and the vulnerability and risk assessment of school buildings. Here you can see the homepage of the, uh, of the platform where we have the building's data. In this uh, page, you can see the building of the specific user account, the recently added buildings in total, as well as all the buildings that has been uh, recorded uh, uh, by the whole team. Uh, I just mentioned again that uh, the application can be used by several engineers of the same team. And then we can see here all the data as a team. Uh, the data, of course, can be exported in a CSV format file. And uh, you can also have search uh, to the uh, several buildings here. So we can search by the name or by the council, county or the municipality uh, or by the ID of the building to find the information we, uh, we want. There is also a field here, the new building field, where we can add a building to. Not only the application can have a new building, but we can have a new building also from the, uh, from the web platform. So by uh, adding this button, we move on to the registration form, which is similar, so I will not analyze it. It's similar with the RISCO smartphone application form. So the data, the data that I showed you before uh, for the application, for the smartphone application are the same in this form too. This happens because sometimes we, want, we have the information, so we want to uh, uh, write this down from the application and not from uh, the web platform and we don't need the application. Um, the main difference with the application is this uh, field that uh, from the web platform, we can create building groups. What does it mean? In case of a school, you may know that a school may be a school complex that consists of several 
uh, school buildings in it. So here we can have the specific part where we can add two or three big school buildings in a specific school complex. In addition, at the end of this page, uh, there are some statistics where we can have an optimal, uh, let's say, visualization of uh, the various statistics of the, of the buildings. So we can see the statistics regarding the number of buildings per municipality. Uh, we can see the classification per material. Uh, you can see here, for example, 69.6% .6 of the buildings are reinforced concrete. Um, the 18.4% of the buildings are precast school buildings. Then we have the classification per lateral load resisting system. You can see here again that the 41.2% of the buildings are dual frame wall system buildings, while the 39.1% are infield frame buildings. The same for the other categories. We will also have statistics regarding the classification per number of floors. Of course, the most of the buildings are uh, low rise buildings. You see 42% are uh, two story buildings. 39.8% uh, are one story building. Uh, it's more unusual to have other buildings of many Floors. Mainly this happens when we have a building, uh, maybe it's a residential building, at, at the basement of the building, um, we, we see, uh, not at the basement, sorry, at the uh, first story of the building, we may have a school building, for example, a nursery school. We also have the classification per construct, construction time period. Again, here you can see that 41.3% of the buildings are constructed after 1995. Uh, and uh, we have another classification if the building has uh, pilotis. So most of the buildings, of course, does not have pilotis, but there are some school buildings that have soft story. Then you can see the seismic hazard uh, task of the online platform. Here we, you can see the various intensity measure because we have uh, different seismic hazards for various intensity measures. You can see here that we have five intensity measures, PGA, as well as uh, spectral accelerations at uh, various uh, uh, return periods. And then uh, we have uh, at uh, the bottom of this page, the various return periods uh, of the seismic hazard scenarios. Here we can see the total number of the buildings that have been registered in this platform. And then if we select a specific school building, we have some information here in this task and also at the right where we can see the municipality of the building, its address. Uh, I raise it here for uh, sensitivity reasons. Uh, we can, you can see the uh, coordinates of the building, latitude and longitude, as well as for the specific scenario and the specific uh, intensity measure, PGA uh, at uh, 475 year return period, we can see the PGA that is 0.32G for this building. The same for uh, the other buildings. In addition here in the platform, we have some other information uh, such as the local soil conditions um, of the, the area of interest. Uh, in this case, uh, is the region of Central Macedonia. Uh, you can see here uh, the survey velocity 30 of uh, the area. You can see also uh, the soil category according to Eurocode date. Uh, also, there is a lens at the right uh, to understand exactly uh, the colors uh, in the map. Uh, we also have another map with a geological area of the of the, uh, of the specific area. And finally, uh, another task is the um, ground slope. Uh, again, with uh, the legend, with the description of the colors. Then we want to move to the uh, pre-seismic checking results uh, that are received from the rapid visual screening. Um, from the, all the data I showed you before, uh, each, each one of them receives a specific score. After we um, have a, a procedure to take this score by adding the specific score of each data, 
we have a final score. This final score, if it is above a prescribed limit, in our case, according to us, 2000 method, uh, this value is the number of two, the building uh, is considered sufficient and does not need a uh, recheck. If the building is below this limit, the building does not meet modern requirements and further investigation is required. So if we move on to the platform to see uh, a specific result here, and we select a building, we can see information such as the name, the coordinate, the material, the lateral load resistance mm -hmm. system, the gold level, and the number of floors of the specific building. And we have the result in this case. Here in this building I uh, chose, we can see that the building is sufficient, its score is 2.5, and does not need further investigation. Uh, you can see here also some colors. With green, we have the sufficient buildings. With uh, uh, yellow, we have the buildings that need further investigation. Then I, I move on to, uh, to the next part. Uh, in this uh, precise mix checking, we added also some filters. Uh, these filters are uh, regarding uh, the regional unit, the municipality, the construction material, the lateral load resisting system of the building, as well as the code level. In this case, we can easily see some information that are very important in the area of interest. And uh, after we have specific selections, here the buildings are uh, selected accordingly. For example, if I choose a specific municipality, I will see here only the buildings of this municipality. And also the statistics, at the end of the page, we also have some statistics. The statistics are also um, changed according to the selections of the filters. In this page, we have uh, these specific statistics, the number of buildings, and we can see the sufficient uh, and also the buildings that are not sufficient and need further investigation. We can see the number of buildings per material, the number of buildings per structural type according to us method only. Uh, here, there are specific characterizations, but in the help menu, we explain what are these, uh, um, what are these uh, code, codings mean. Uh, the same in the application, so the user can easily know uh, what does this uh, um, code mean. And also we have statistics uh, for the number of buildings per the lateral load resisting system. There are some other statistics too, that, but I don't uh, show it uh, here. Um, then we move on to the vulnerability part where we can choose again a building, we can see specific information at the right here, again the name, the coordinate, the material, lateral load resisting system, code level and number of floors of the building. And at the bottom we can see the fragility curves that are automatically selected and the vulnerability curve. Again we can select the specific return period so uh, after we select this specific period, we can see the result here for the probabilities of exceedance for the slight, moderate, extensive, and complete damage, as well as the, the value of the damage index. As I told you before, in this uh, field, we have the return period. So now you can see the 475 years return period. But in the next slide, you can see uh, the 1000 return period. And also, if you uh, notice, this line has been uh, moved at the right because we have a more um, serious uh, uh, case, uh, uh, more serious uh, seismic hazard scenario for the 1,000 years. And you can see also that the probability of the incidence uh, values as well as the damage index has increased too. Then uh, we move on to the risk uh, case. Uh, here you can see the risk results where we can have uh, we have colors of, of the school buildings. They are um, colors that green, yellow, and red. Also, you can see here the uh, various fields I showed you before. Um, but I wanted to show that in this case, uh, to have a better explanation, I translated the left uh, um, part of this. Uh, uh, slide to see of, the, of this part of the platform to see the sections that we have. I showed you before the data sections, then we saw the results section, and there is also a management section regarding the account, the user account, 
the help button that we can find information we want and also if we want to sign down the platform. So here I will have the explanations again. We have the filters, namely uh, the, the regional unit, uh, the municipality, material, lateral load resisting system, and the code level for an easy way to see specific important results. Again, at the uh, uh, below it, we have the return period. And uh, something I didn't mention in all the pages I showed you before, but you can see it also here. There is a button help from which the user can find guide information and explanations of the various fields in the platform, as well as the button new building from which the user can create uh, a new uh, registry of the building. Then we can see the statistics on the end of this page where we have again statistics per number of building uh, per color, uh, green, yellow, and red. Again, the number of buildings per construction material, per lateral load resisting system, and per code level. Uh, these are the most important tasks. So we wanted to see uh, basically in a visual manner um, where we are in specific cases. And also again, the filters here exist. For example, we can see these results for specific municipalities. And uh, to begin to conclude, here you can see the Reschools website, uh, um, uh, uh, the link here if you want to enter the website to find uh, further information. And this button is the platform, bar platform where you can enter uh, the platform, but it needs credentials to sign in. Uh, not a, 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 every user can uh, enter the platform. If the, uh, he does not have credentials, they they cannot, the users cannot uh, enter. Um, again, another part of the site here that shows the aims uh, of the, of the uh, RISCUS uh, system and methodology and of the RISCUS project in general. And some basic uh, conclusions is uh, regarding the RISCUS uh, application that it's a smartphone application for the rapid visual screening of building. Uh, these applications for iOS and Android devices is available at the links that you can see in the screen. The Rescues platform is an innovative web platform for the vulnerability and uh, risk assessment for different seismic scenarios of school buildings. Here you can see again the, um, the link of the website. And uh, just uh, to mention that the risk school system will allow the optimal design of decision making procedures and risk mitigation strategies, such as strengthening and retrofitting actions for school buildings. Uh, I would also like to mention that the risk schools tool has an open architecture, so it can be directly extended for other critical infrastructure. For example, we can um, of course, with a few modifications, we can use this tool to have uh, information about hospitals or other critical buildings. And uh, that's from me. Thank you for your attention. And uh, if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer. Thank you very much. Other uh, if there are any quick comments or questions. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think we have to rush to the next uh, presentation. Okay. Uh, I will be the next presenter. So. Okay. Uh, Thanks. Share my screen. Just, just a minute. Okay. Uh, can you see my screen? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, my presentation is actually a. Uh, um, con a continuation of Stella's presentation, I will show you more in depth the specific application of the RISC schools platform to school buildings in the region of Central Macedonia in Greece. Uh, so in order to get to the platform, uh, we first uh, need to go to the RISC schools website and uh, to click on the blue button shown here uh, with the red rectangle. Uh, so this is the risk platform, as already Stella told you, is an online platform for the, for the pre-seismic checking, seismic vulnerability and risk assessment of buildings. Uh, so this, this is the first uh, page you see, is the building's data. 
Uh, when one can uh, see his own uh, already inserted buildings, uh, all recently inserted uh, buildings in the platform, as well as all buildings that have been inserted by all resisted users. Uh, we have also the, uh, the possibility to search for a specific building uh, or uh, buildings that belong to a specific uh, municipality uh, or to a specific regional unit. And of course, uh, the user can add a new building by clicking uh, on the blue button shown on your right. There are also some statistics of the buildings. Uh, here you may see the statistics uh, for, from the buildings of the region of the Central Macedonia in Greece, the school buildings. Uh, so this is the buildings per municipality, uh, the buildings with respect to the, the material, with respect to the lateral load resisting system, and uh, with respect to the number of floors, with respect to the existence of not of a short story, and with respect to the period of construction. Uh, so you may see that uh, as already Stella told you, most of the buildings, uh, of most of the school buildings are low-rise buildings um, that uh, do not have a soft story. And the period of construction uh, is, uh, for example, 40% 40, 40 uh, uh, have been designed and constructed uh, with the new seismic code, where there are other a uh, lot of uh, uh, a uh, large percentage also constructed uh, with the other previous codes. So in order, in order to insert a new school building, uh, you go to this bottom shown uh, on your uh, right with the red rectangle, and uh, you will move to this uh, environment uh, when uh, the user can add the information about the school identity. Uh, and first, of course, is the name of the building. In our case, uh, uh, it will be a test building. And then uh, you add information about the use of the building. In our case, uh, is a school building and some other information that are not compulsory. For example, the maximum number of uh, people that are in the building. Then uh, you may activate the pre-seismic checking button in order to uh, automatically allow for, for the pre-seismic checking calculations to uh, per be performed. And then you add the information about the location of the building, uh, so the regional unit. In our case, we'll consider building uh, in the regional unit of Thessaloniki. The municipality will consider building in Lagada municipality of Thessaloniki. And of course, we add the address and uh, the coordinates uh, and some other information that is not compulsory. So then we add information about the technical characteristics of the building and specifically the lateral load resisting system and uh, the material. In our case, we will consider an infield frame, an RC infield frame. And the importance factor according to AAC 2000, of course, it's a school building, so it will be a Sigma three. And the, max, the number of the above ground floor, we will consider a two-story building in this case uh, uh, with the no uh, underground uh, um, floors. And then uh, uh, there are some other information, for example, the plant surface, the total structure surface, the uh, year of construction that is compulsory. Uh, so in this case, we'll consider a, a low code design a building uh, that is constructed in 1980. And there are also other information regarding, for example, if there is or no, uh, a roof or not, if there is a soft story, uh, if there are static plans, if uh, the structure has been uh, retrofitted, uh, etc. So uh, then uh, the user may insert the seismological and geotechnical data and specifically the seismic hazard zone according to Act 2000 and uh, Eurocode 8. As our building is located in Lagada municipality, the seismic zone is a uh, two according to Act 2000 and the soil category according to Eurocode 8. In this case, uh, we will consider it as unknown. The structure type of the building according to us prescriptions. Uh, so uh, this is, in, this is uh, compulsory in order to uh, allow for the precise checking calculation to take place. 
And some vulnerability data, as already uh, Stella told, uh, said to you before, for example, uh, if the uh, importance of the structure has been increased due to the change in use, if the structure has been designed with no seismic code, uh, if it has suffered previous uh, damage due to an earthquake, if it's in bad condition, if it has some irregularities in plan or elevation, uh, if it can exhibit torsional effects, uh, and some others. Another important thing uh, you can uh, uh, feel here is if the building uh, belongs to a building group. Uh, that means is one of the buildings in a building complex that may have more or less the same coordinates. And uh, you can add one more uh, photos uh, of your building. And finally, uh, you may save uh, all this information to be directly inserted to the central database. Uh, then uh, you go to the SASMI hazard page. Yeah, then we can see uh, as SASMI hazard uh, maps uh, for different intensity measures. These maps have been derived from a probabilistic SASMI hazard analysis in OpenQuake based on, on the SHM20 uh, information. So you may see the SASMI hazard for different intensity measures, so except for PGA that are already shown now, you can see also uh, the spectral acceleration uh, at uh, different periods, 0 0.3, 0 0.6, one second to 1.5 second. And of course, uh, you may see the SASMI hazard for different, for six different scenarios. Uh, corresponding to different return periods, uh, 73 years, 102 years, for, uh, five, uh, 475 years, 1,000 years, 2,500 years, and 5,000 years. So uh, for our selected test building, uh, you may see here for each of these scenario, the computed PGA values. Of course, we may also see uh, the and, uh, spectral acceleration values. So here, for example, for, the, for our test building, the PGA for the 73 years uh, scenario is equal to 0 0.15 G. Uh, for the 102 years is equal to 0 0.80 G. For the classical 475 years, the PGA is, is equal to 0 0.37 G. Uh, just to mention that these PGA values are at the ground surface, so the set effects have been already taken into account. And of course, for the more extreme scenarios and the 1,000 years, the PGA is equal to 0 0.51 G. Uh, for the 2,500 years, is even uh, higher, 0 0.74 G. And for the extreme uh, 5,000 year, is almost equal to 1 G. So now we move to the results of the platform. Uh, the results are more, uh, most, uh, in terms of pre-seismic checking and in terms of vulnerability and risk assessment. So uh, this is the page of the pre-seismic checking calculations where one can see uh, all the school buildings for uh, which the pre-seismic checking button has been activated. And of course, uh, we may see our test building. Uh, and for which uh, uh, we uh, define a score, a calculate, we calculate a score according uh, to us prescriptions. So this score is equal to 1.7 for this building. Uh, it's uh, lower than two. So uh, we considered it as insufficient. That means that the building does not meet their modern requirements and further investigation is required. We have, of course, some statistics of the pre-seismic checking. Uh, with the blue bar, we may see uh, the buildings that have a sufficient score, while with the red bar, uh, the corresponding uh, school buildings with an insufficient score. So I will not go into details on this. Uh, there is also, uh, we, have, we can also use uh, specific filters. Uh, as already uh, Stella told you, uh, with respect to the regional unit, the municipality, the material, the lateral load resisting system, and the code level. Uh, for instance, if we use a filter uh, in uh, the municipality, as we will just want to see what is going on in, uh, the, res in the region where uh, our test building is located, 
uh, we will have a different statistic. So we may see here the corresponding statistics of the pre-seismic checking uh, with filter on municipalities. So here are the buildings only in the municipality of Lagada. Uh, then we move to the vulnerability page. Uh, where uh, we can see all in the, uh, we have a map where we can see all the buildings uh, for which the fragility curves has been assigned. Uh, so just to mention that these fragility curves have been uh, taken from the SRM20 uh, database, uh, except for uh, some typologies that uh, SRM20 has uh, was not able to provide fragility curves. So in this case, this is the case of the precast buildings, uh, for example. So in this case, we use some uh, literature curves. Uh, so here you may see uh, all uh, the buildings. And of course, you may see that if we, uh, um, if we click on one of these buildings, we may see each uh, corresponding uh, fragility curves in terms of uh, probability of exceedance, as we may see here uh, uh, an example for our test building. And so these fragility curves are uh, derived from four damage states, from slight, moderate, extensive, and complete damage. And we may also see the corresponding vulnerability curve. And of course, we may make some calculations. Uh, so uh, if we choose a specific scenario uh, with a return period for uh, 475 years, uh, we may see the calculated probabilities of exceedance for this scenario. Uh, as well as the computed uh, damage index. Of course, uh, if we change the scenario, uh, we'll, uh, we'll select another scenario with 102 years, uh, the, um, these probabilities, of course, will change. The fertility case, of course, will not change, but the probabilities and the damage index will change. And the same uh, if we change, if we um, use a more extreme scenario with a, a return period equal to 1,000 years, here, the damage index is will be, of course, high. And uh, then we move to the risk assessment page, uh, where uh, the seismic risk is computed uh, automatically for different scenarios, for the six different scenarios. It, uh, and uh, returns, uh, each, uh, each building will have a specific uh, color. Uh, we have a three color uh, categorization. Uh, green are for the non or a, a slight non structural damages. Yellow characterizes the buildings with moderate structural damages, while red uh, characterizes the buildings with heavy or very heavy damages, including partial and total collapse. Uh, so here you may see some risk statistics uh, for a specific scenario. Here is, for example, with the 475 years. As you may see here, uh, most of the buildings are characterized as green. Uh, we have a lot of, uh, also a lot of uh, yellow buildings and only a few uh, red uh, square buildings. And uh, now you may see uh, the risk calculations for the different scenarios. As you may see here, uh, for the 73-year scenario, all buildings in the region of Central Macedonia will be characterized as uh, green. And of course, our test buildings uh, that's shown on the bottom. The same for the 102-year scenario. Uh, while for the 475 years, we may also see a lot of uh, yellow buildings and a uh, few uh, red buildings. In this case, our test building uh, will be characterized as uh, yellow. Uh, while for the more extreme 1,000 year scenario, uh, as we may see here, we have much more uh, yellow and a uh, lot of uh, red buildings as well. And in this case, our uh, test building will be characterized as uh, red. And of course, the same is uh, for the more extreme scenarios. Uh, we can also make use of specific uh, filters on the regional unit, municipality, uh, the uh, material, the lateral load resistance system, and the code level. And uh, for example, if we use a filter uh, of the municipality, uh, we may see here only the buildings that are located in the municipality of Lagava, where our test building is also located. And who may have uh, some statistics regarding uh, these specific uh, buildings. 
Uh, we may also use a filter on the code level. For example, we want only to know what is going on with the buildings with a local design as our test building. Uh, so here are the corresponding statistics. Uh, we may see here that, of course, we have much more uh, yellow and uh, red buildings in this case, as uh, they're only the buildings designed uh, with a low code level. And some conclusions here, uh, the applicability and usefulness of free schools innovative online platform for the pre-seismic checking and vulnerability and risk assessment uh, for the various seismic uh, risk scenarios has been shown through this specific application uh, to school buildings in the region of Central Macedonia in Greece. And these schools uh, will enhance the optimal design of the system making procedures and risk mitigation strategies, strengthening the retrofitting actions for uh, school buildings. And that's it. I would like to thank you uh, all for your attention. And I'm happy to answer to any questions, of course. Thank you, Stavrula. I thank everybody for speeding the presentations and we are we catch up some of the of the time that we missed at the beginning. Uh, if there are any questions or comments, uh, you may want to just a add. comment from uh, from my side. Uh, uh, I think that you should start thinking uh, the application of uh, of risk schools uh, platform and uh, model and everything in Cyprus. I think that there is nothing similar available in Cyprus and as we have already checked it uh, and we will continue checking it in the coming few months you will have uh, a tool which is uncomparable for any other in Cyprus so it is a good occasion to speak with people there uh, which are um, stakeholders of this kind of application, civil protection or uh, the Ministry of uh, Education or whatever, and see how it could be applied. Uh, of course, it you need to uh, have a certain budget. It cannot be applied like <laughs> this. Yes. Thank you, Stavrula. 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 Comments or questions, or uh, of course, we are going to discuss this. I'm, I'm just avoiding the uh, start of the discussion. Okay. Now we are going to do this. A second, a second soon. important point has been already raised by the two ladies is that it is uh, the whole structure is an open uh, structure. Let's say it can be easily adapted to other kinds of lifeline structures, uh, important structures, uh, public buildings, uh, uh, or any other kind of, uh, of buildings and uh, infrastructures and critical infrastructures, of course, like hospitals, et cetera. So we have done it uh, in purpose in that way. So it can be easily adapted. Okay. No, no more comments or questions. I think everybody is ready for a, for a break. Uh, can I suggest we come back at twelve thirty-five or twelve forty, like fifteen twenty minutes uh, break? Is it okay? So we can. Uh, continue with the rest of the presentation. So if there are any other suggestions, I think uh, we can also accommodate. The last presentation will be a short one because okay. uh, because Christos had some problems and so it will be a very, very short one. So practically, Perfect. if if I'm not mistaking, uh, Eddie, we will have one uh, full presentation and a short one. Stavrula, is is that? Uh, is... Yes, uh, the last presentation will be very short because okay. Christos is uh, not available because he's sick. Okay. 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 So, okay. So we meet that uh, in, let's say, 20 minutes, 1240. It's okay. Maybe grab a coffee or quick lunch. Okay.
Okay. Okay. So okay. see you in a while. Bye. See you in a while. Bye bye. Bye. Maybe we give another minute or two, or Evi, are you ready? You, you want to go ahead? Okay, we give another couple of minutes and we start. Yurgo, come to the microphones. Yeah. I, I think we, I, I am recording this. So I will send you the recording, the one of last week or so. And we can ask uh, our presenters to, to share their uh, presentations so we can uh, also put in the deliverable, but also in the, on the web page and YouTube, wherever we put all of this. So please make a note. Petros, I told you that I need to sometimes to correct because this has been translated from Italian, this presentation very quickly. And uh, by reading it uh, while I was presenting, I, I found many funny translation that has to be correct. <laughs> that's, uh, that's good. <laughs> No, we, I mean, we don't really, uh, I mean, we just have to do it. It's not that we have to do it tomorrow or the day after okay, tomorrow. Okay, no, no, but uh, I need, uh, I mean, uh, some days to to correct it, right? to read it, basically, and to adjust yes. some uh, some wording. It was very interesting, the, at least the one, um, the first one, which was uh, with all this, uh, Damages for masonry. Yeah. It was uh, way more than uh, our classifications. I mean, uh, but are they consistent? I mean, I think many of those are consistent with EMS also, the European. Yeah, that's right. And consistent with the form uh, to make the safety check, that the one I'm going to present now. Okay. Ah, it's your presentation. I thought it was Evie's presentation. No, no, it's my presentation. Ah, sorry. I apologize. So, so I think we can uh, go ahead and start. Okay. Yes. Um, okay. Sorry about that. No, no, that's fine. No worry. Okay. All right. I'm, I'm getting off. Uh, I'm sometimes switching off my camera because I'm trying to take some pictures. Okay. Okay. So I share my screen and I start. Okay. Thanks. Hi, dear. There is a friend of mine that's come to visit me. Oh, Hi. Man. Ciao. 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 Hello. <laughs> Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. OK, so um, uh, sorry for that. No, this is not what so I wanted to show. Is this one. OK. Here we are. So uh, you can uh, see my, my screen, don't you? Okay, um, this yes. presentation uh, is a courtesy of uh, uh, two friends of mine that work at, at the moment at the Civil Protection, National Department of Civil Protection. And uh, one is uh, Filomena Papa, that is my colleagues uh, and the students at the time, but now she's, uh, she's manager at the Civil Protection. And Angelo Pizza, that is a very close collaborator of her and of us, and is a very, very, very nice person and a very competent person on the, on the safety check. 
picture that you see is uh, Amatrice earthquakes, as you see, uh, that is really devastating. Uh, okay. So what is the IADES form? The IADES form is the official forms, Italian official forms for the safety check of the structure after an earthquake. Uh, it consists of nine sections. There are, a, I mean, a lot, a lot of information. And uh, uh, I won't anticipate that the slide are many, and uh, I didn't cut the slide because I think that uh, it could be very useful for you to have in your repository and to study it and to have a look. So uh, I'll be forced to go very quick through the slides. Uh, however, I want to point out some important uh, aspects and uh, some important point of the compilation of these, uh, of these uh, four. Um, okay. So this is the section of the of the of the form. Uh, the the, the INS form has been published uh, in the norms, Italian norms, on the on the uh, official gazette, and uh, it's now the official tool to identify damage and the safety check of the buildings. Uh, link it to the to the uh, compilation of these. There is the uh, facilities, the incentives, the money recovering of the of the of the government. So uh, it has not just only a technical uh, uh, application, but also it became a tool for the administrative management of of the emergency. Okay, uh, these are the section, building identification, description of the building, uh, types of building, damage and structural element, damage at non-structural element, external hazard from other structure, soil and foundation, outcome and usability, and other observation. Outcome and usability is exactly what we call agibilità, that is the feasibility, literally, but it could be the uh, outcome of the uh, safety check. That, uh, that define if the building as could be used or not. I want to um, declare soon that this, uh, this form is uh, only a, a series of information. Uh, I, I, I always say in my, in my presentation that this is a list of products that you have to buy at the supermarket. So <laughs> it's, it's a nothing more is a something that uh, could allow you not to uh, not to um, forget anything you need to see uh, as you probably make a list of uh, things that you want to buy at the supermarket in order to be sure not to forget anything you want to buy um, but doesn't give a strict relation between all the information that you collect through this form and the final judgment. So the final judgment is up to the competence of the professional. And for this reason, that was created the Medea, the ones, the, the two presentation that we did uh, this morning, because Medea was uh, a way to have uh, a key of interpretation of the damage in order to dry technician professionals to give uh, a uh, i mean an homogeneous final judgment of the safety of the building this is a very crucial point because uh, you can uh, you can imagine that implication of different judgment to the same buildings could give uh, i mean inequality in the treatment of the people big inequality so that is a very very important aspect okay uh, first of all, I want to uh, clarify that every time you see the circle is a single choice. Anyone, anytime you see the, the square, this, uh, this, uh, this, uh, this square is for multi-choice, okay, within the section. Right. The first point is uh, how is activated this? This is activated, the building inspections is activated usually on the base of the citizen request owner or legal representative of the building. Uh, of course, you have to do a, a, an inspection, the structural inspection, 
must be carried out on the entire buildings because even if a people owner of one apartment ask you to make some inspection because some damage appear <laughs> on the structure of their apartment, this doesn't mean anything. It's not a question to be to be worried about one apartment, but to be worried on the statics and on the behavior of all the buildings. So if several requests for inspection referring to the same building uh, arrive, they should be grouped by all the, I mean, organization of the civil protection and the processes uh, to, uh, to, to uh, as, as one will uh, <coughs> request. Uh, another important aspect is the identification of the building. Because of course, uh, you could have uh, <coughs> some buildings that are grouped. Uh, and uh, so uh, the attribution of practicability is relative to the building in its en entirety and not to the individual real estate unit or part of the building. In fact, the building represents the minimum structural unit whose behavior must be seen as a wool and as and the wool's damage, even uh, in the individual part, as an important reper reper repercussions on the safety of all other parts. So uh, in many cases in the historical center, especially in Italy, but uh, in many other European historical centers uh, in Europe, you could have a, a structural aggregate. So structural aggregation of, uh, of uh, different buildings. That means, uh, in our case, a set of non-homogeneous buildings in contact or with the connection uh, which can interact under the seismic or dynamic action in general. For instance, so how can we <laughs> recognize that we are speaking within an aggregate different of different building? By type of construction, height that could be different, age of construction, if is available, offset plan. So the identification could be done within one single block, like this, for instance, like the one that I am showing with the arrows, and then, uh, even if in the map is not clear, once the technician goes there and uh, uh, understand and identify in the aggregate, in the aggregation of uh, several building uh, touched one with another, they could, uh, uh, I mean, uh, identify with uh, on the map different buildings, and so gives. Uh, a, a, a numbering of these. And so this is an, an aggregate that is, uh, let's say aggregate 15, but then you have to split inside the aggregation of the buildings, a name with a different number for each, giving a different number for each of the structural units. <clears throat> that means uh, what we call homogeneous structural unit that is, a, uh, of course, this uh, is not easy to, to, uh, to do. Uh, it requires some time from, uh, from, uh, from the people. And, uh, uh, and this is uh, something that, for instance, appear is uh, here in a map. This is an, a, an extract uh, of, uh, of uh, a cadastral map where, for instance, in all these aggregation, has been, uh, uh, you see, oh my goodness, today everybody is uh, calling me. Okay, uh, is, uh, is, um, there is a number for the aggregation and sub number for all uh, other uh, buildings. So look, here is, is a number of requests, number of instanza is number of requests. So one owners, and this is the identification number of the aggregation. And this is the number of uh, sub-aggregate, that means the buildings. And in fact, this gives you the final ID identification number of the, uh, of the buildings and of the form. So the first two uh, digits are the region. 
The third, the fourth, and the, and the fifth are the province. The following three are the uh, municipal, municipality code. <clears throat> and these are code from the cadastro. These are fixed in Italy. And then there is the aggregate number and the additional unique identifier that is the number of the building within the aggregate, okay? <clears throat> At the end, you have this string, this, uh, this uh, series of number that gives you the identification of the building and, uh, and uh, guarantee uh, the unicity of the record that you are uh, working with. Okay, these are some, uh, some example. Uh, right, the, uh, the first, uh, the first um, part of the form uh, is uh, the identif identification of, uh, of, the, um, of, the, of the buildings and not just only these, uh, these uh, ID that I just described, but it could be identify, identified with uh, even the declaration of the province, of the name of the municipality, or if there is any sub name of the locality within the municipality, and if it's a street, a road, a square, or whatever, uh, and the number, and the number. Um, then uh, there are the some data about the survey identificator. So who is the, which is the number of the team? Because the team has to be registered since the beginning of all the uh, action of the safety. So each team has one number. The team is uh, generally done, uh, composed by two technicians. <clears throat> and uh, <clears throat> here there is the number of the form and then the date, the day, the month and the year. Uh, okay, and uh, then uh, the, the building identification that as you can see is in gray. That means that generally this part is uh, compiled by the office that gives you uh, the, 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 the commitment to, to do this, kind, this you as technician. So this is done by the office and um, with the number of the cadastral data, and the building identification, uh, okay? I'm sorry for the noise that you hear, but this is, a, we are very in the center. And so there is continuously uh, some ambulances uh, or something that uh, just make all this noise, I'm sorry. Uh, okay, then you can <coughs> add uh, some photocopy of the structural aggregate with the building identification. Uh, and this is something that you can do like this, okay? Some photocopy of this with the building identification, where is it? And uh, even doing your uh, draft for, uh, uh, this, for um, splitting one aggregate, one block in more buildings, putting the number, okay. Uh, and then there is uh, the use code uh, according to some uh, some codification of use, and so and this is used to facilitate the identification in the database for uh, for uh, for destination code of of the building. Of course, the identification of the buildings is uh, is important, and uh, is important even the building position. Uh, so uh, the building if is isolated if it's aggregated by the internal or is a, a, an end building of an aggregation or is in the corner, because of course it makes a difference the position of the building in the aggregate or uh, in the block or if it's isolated. Uh, the section two uh, is uh, for the description of the building. So the total number of floors that are these, the average story I, this is a some uh, class, some intervals, <clears throat> some ranges of the average story high in meter, and the number of basement, okay, which are the basement. Then the average story surface, 
And in this case, the square meter of the average story surface, uh, the ages of a, of a, of a construction. And uh, even in this case, there are uh, some classes with some range of year before 1919, between 19 and 45, between 45 and 61. In a way, these ranges want to give you some information about, uh, about the building type, because of course, before 1990 is all measuring. Uh, between 1990 and uh, 1919 and, uh, and 1945 is measuring, but with different characteristics, and then is reinforced the concrete. And the measure, of course, because the measure is still uh, uh, used in some uh, area. Okay, then the use residential, production, business, office, uh, public services, or whatever, a number of the units in use in, in these buildings. So, as uh, the percentage of utilization, uh, if it's abandoned uh, or in construction, or how much is used for a different kind of use. Right. Uh, another important um, uh, information is the number of occupants, the number of occupants of the buildings. This is important for a possible identification of people involved or uh, identification of homeless or something like that. And the property, if it's private or public. Uh, this is some detail on this uh, section two that I already described. So I will be quick on this. And uh, even because of the time uh, run quickly and I have no more than 25, well, almost 30 minutes yet. Yeah. And um, so this is an example of how to uh, compile the uh, building high. So for instance, the total number of a floor four in this case, uh, and you have a one uh, num B one in the basement. Okay, so this is the way to compile this four total floor of which one underground. In this case, we have a three total floor because uh, you don't have uh, less in this case these other these other floor here for uh, for this technical uh, space under the, the 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 roof so you have three floor and one uh, and one in the basement underground in this case if you have a, a ceiling that is not a floor it doesn't change it remains three plus one in the basement about the building description uh, metrical data we have uh, here uh, the 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 um, average uh, story high. So what we do is to uh, to 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 consider the uh, each high of each floor that could be even uh, different two meters and a half, three meters and a half, three meters. In the case of uh, of the pinched floor, we use an average high. So if for instance one meters and a half in this case. <clears throat> And we make an arithmetic media and we define the average uh, height of, uh, of, of, uh, of, the, of the story. And we choose which is the intervals that we have to tick. About the, uh, the square meter, we do the media, and this is much easier, uh, uh, among all, uh, all the floor. And then we tick again, which is the interval that we is, is in our case. About the age, this is an information that sometimes is reported uh, on the on the on the on, on the uh, on the main door of the buildings, or that knows uh, people from uh, from the buildings, so or the porter, or any other people informed. <laughs> but some other times is known in the area because of the historical information. If you ask me about Naples, I know more or less the building when has been built. Uh, uh, and so the same is in this case. And uh, you can choose uh, the construction 
and the possible renovation. In this case, you have a maximum two alternative. Uh, so you put uh, a cross here. So the building has been built between 1919 and 1945, while there has been a renovation between 1992 and 2001. Um, the use uh, is residential, for instance, in this case, and you put three because there are three residential units. Uh, touristic, one uh, if strategic, uh, strategic uh, service, and so on. Uh, utilization is a sort of uh, evaluation of percentage between uh, public and private, for instance. And uh, for each of the uh, option of the utilization, you could put a tick. Uh, so as the number of occupants, that is the average of number of people who are normally present uh, in, the, in, the, in the buildings. <clears throat> okay, section three is building typology. This is actually a real description of the buildings as a typology. As you see, there are two different sections, masonry or mixed and reinforced concrete or steel. As uh, was expected, the masonry uh, section is much bigger than the reinforced concrete because the masonry could uh, appear in, uh, in a variety of ways. Basically, the idea is to combine a vertical structure with horizontal structure, because this gives you an idea if we, uh, of how the building performs, uh, if it's a box behavior or not, and if the, the, the floor are rigid, the semi-rigid or not. And uh, uh, even the vertical structure are generalized in uh, irregular or regular, so is a rubber stone or is a block or bricks. And if there are some ring beams or tie that is in a way of idea, if it's well connected for each floor. About the, um, the mixed, there are some other kinds of mixed, but all these we will uh, see later in the following more in detail. This is just to give an, uh, an idea, a glance. Uh, so as uh, the, the, the other structure, like reinforced concrete, uh, shear wall, steel frame, and the regularity of, uh, of the infill panel, and so on. So um, cognitive analysis. That is a, a vertical structure. Uh, so type of external phasing, section type, quality of mortar, connection between elements, measuring with irregular texture and poor quality, type one regular texture and the good quality masonry type two. So it depends from the combination of regular or irregular and uh, with the kind of uh, connection if there are uh, uh, ties, rods or, or, team, or ring beams that could facilitate the um, box behavior. And in fact, this was we probably should introduce before uh, the, 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 the presentation of this morning, um, our builder can uh, uh, counteract, can respond to horizontal action of the earthquakes. Technicians rely on the number of components that can be combined with each other. So the diaphragm that is uh, the, basically the, the floor that, uh, that we would like be as much rigid as possible that guarantee the transferring of, uh, the, of the horizontal uh, action to the wall, to the shear wall <coughs> underneath. Um, for the framed uh, structure, uh, the moment resistance could be uh, absorbed by the bending and the shear uh, reaction of the of the of the frame, uh, but also by brazed frame that or shear wall, as sometimes are are called even in the terminology of reinforced concrete. So fundamental role of connection. Uh, what keeps the building up under the pressure of horizontal force is the interaction between vertical and horizontal 
elements. And this is the key of understanding. <laughs> okay, this is a picture that show uh, nicely what we mean for box effect. Seismically well-organized masonry building, uh, a detachment between orthogonal walls and the presence of chain, presence of uh, carbs here is ring beam. This is another wrong translation. Ring beam on the floor, rigid and resistant floors in their own floors, not pushing cover. So the embendment in the corner, the ring beam around and the rigid floor with the some ties. These are basically what we like, what we want, what we, what we expect from a good masonry uh, building. So for masonry structure, we subdivide in the vertical structure described by regular texture and poor quality, regular texture and good quality. So this is not so much good, this is good, but this can be combined with and without uh, ring beam motai. <clears throat> okay, then horizontal structure. So the horizontal structure could be uh, not identified, okay, but bolts without tie rod, and this is no good because bolts, bolts obviously are, uh, are uh, quite flexible, not rigid, without tie are even quite weak. Vault, vault with the tie rod is a bit better, but then we distinguish the, the floor in the flexible, semi-rigid and rigid, according to the, the material and, and, uh, and the building typology. Right. So the com building measure and the is, uh, uh, com is uh, described by the combination of a vertical structure and horizontal structure. <laughs> okay. So the vault and the flat floor. Distinction in relation to characteristic that may have repercussion on the, the overall behavior of the structural organism. Um, we already discussed this, so I'll go quick on. Uh, what happens with the deformable um, and without ring beam? Happens something like this. So overturning, uh, uh, so out, uh, uh, mechanism out of plane with the ring beam, but with the deformable uh, floor, you can have uh, some deformation, some cracks, but the ring beam could save the overturning. Uh, with the overturning and the rigid floor means that uh, probably you are uh, calling to help the, um, the, the, the wall in the direction of, uh, of earthquakes to participate and to react to the, to the, to the action. Look, this is uh, up here in this picture that I'm showing here with the arrow. This is when the diaphragm is rigid. It obviously uh, not deformable in the plane, while in this other case, it's deformable, increasing the action to the central uh, frame in this case. Okay. This is some example of a, of a floor. So you can have a, a deformable floor that is uh, typically the, the, the wooden floor uh, with, the, with the plank, with the simple whooping of floor in iron beam and bolts like this one, okay? Uh, but the, 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 the wooden floor could be even semi-rigid when they have a wooden floor with a double plank or double beam sometimes in the Tuscany is very frequent at this kind. Or when, the, you, when you have uh, iron uh, and, uh, and the tiles like these uh, with the some reinforced concrete slab on top, and this is quite semi-rigid, and um, and finally, you have uh, the rigid one that is uh, the classical reinforced concrete building that is uh, in this in the section is is shown in the picture and in the reality. 
so there has been a philosophy for a long time in the 80s that uh, said that uh, this is a good uh, floor. So there has been a lot of masonry building where the wooden floor has been substituted by this kind of, uh, of floor. But uh, I think that uh, uh, this is not uh, something to, um, I, I will answer to the question later. This is not something that has to be taken in consideration because to be honest, <coughs> this is very heavy. And so this create a big mass with, and so a big horizontal seismic force. And sometimes, or better, often, the masonry were not prepared to support and to react to this uh, increment of force. So I always suggest to keep the wooden floor, reinforce the wooden floor by many, many uh, possible action uh, with the tie, uh, by removing uh, all the caldana, all the, all the mass of, uh, of, um, of a material on top of that, lightening it uh, and uh, putting uh, some uh, connectors nail uh, and to be participated to the wooden beam with very light slab of uh, uh, light net uh, 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 reinforced, re reinforced uh, uh, concrete uh, and so I think can be done in many many other times by keeping light the, the, the floor. Okay, <clears throat> the, uh, the mixed area uh, gives you some option. Uh, so I give you some example. This is isolated column. It's frequent, uh, it's not unusual to find in the masonry building someone that want the double room here to make a very nice hall for dancing, for whatever, and they substitute one wall with a column, of course, and with a beam. Of course, this is not the same under the <laughs> uh, seismic uh, action. Um, or you can have uh, even uh, dishomogeneity in the structural response by having a different combination of misery and reinforced concrete, misery underneath and on top reinforced concrete, or vice versa. Uh, down misery and on top reinforced concrete. I mean, so all even combine at the same level. So misery and reinforced concrete uh, at the same uh, at the same level. This is the example of reinforced concrete on misery. <clears throat> this is vice versa. Is something that you will find. Uh, actually, this is more frequent actually than this, but it happens even so. And this is when reinforced concrete is mixed with the, with the masonry in parallel on the same plan. Of course, these are a particular kind of buildings of which the response is not very much studied uh, all over the, the, the world and they represent a, a, a percentage of a building of which there is, uh, I mean, uh, still uh, need to some study and some uh, and some evaluation of uh, of vulnerable. Uh, okay. Then the presence of strengthening. If the building has been strengthened in a way by uh, the masonry reinforced with injection of unreinforced plasters, I don't like this, but has been done many times. Or reinforced masonry with the reinforced plaster. Uh, misery with other unidentified uh, reinforcement, okay? And uh, the same with roof, you, that is uh, the, the, the other section, the, the other, um, the other um, uh, uh, element in the same section, that is uh, the roof. How is the roof? Heavy roof, not heavy roof, pushing that is uh, pitching basically. Uh, light trust, no light pitching. So these are uh, four different cases that then we will see one uh, after another. So you have to combine the vertical and the horizontal structure on the on the roof. Okay, 
So these are all the, 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 the different that you can phase with. So uh, presence of ring beam, you see presence of ring beam, um, but without tide, but there are ring beam. So the danger of this condition are essentially linked uh, to the aggravation of the horizontal thrust on the support wall due to seismic forces, okay? Um, right, the uh, heavy thrust, of course, uh, is uh, undoubtedly that the most bothersome condition as uh, the high mass caused the birds of, uh, of a considerable seismic forces and these uh, will give uh, a bad consequence. So the presence of, of uh, rigid ridge beams, uh, the presence of uh, ring beams and the presence of ring beams, all this combination of these five, uh, five, uh, uh, how can I say, options gives a different, uh, obviously classification and different resistance to the, to the, to the, to the roof. Other structures uh, that are uh, the force of concrete one, that is uh, basically um, frame, ear walls. Uh, please, could you close your microphone? And hello. Okay, steel frame, okay. Wooden frame that sometimes are not, uh, are not so much, uh, I mean, uh, frequent. <clears throat> and uh, and uh, regularity. Regularity is an important uh, aspect because the regularity gives you a lot of, uh, of a bad uh, consequence in plan and in elevation so as the infill uh, distribution, uh, because uh, you see there could be some torsion in plan action because of uh, the distance between the barycentric, uh, the centroid of the, uh, of the mass and the, of the geometry. And, uh, or you can have the frame in one direction only. Um, uh, or you can have, uh, this is uh, some other example of irregularity in plan, look, this and this to plan and in the infill distribution as well. Um, regularity of arrangement of, of infill panel is important for the uh, consequence that we saw very, very clear in the mechanism uh, discussion with the breaking of the nodes, uh, like this, or because of, of uh, the overturning of, uh, of the infill panel, <clears throat> <clears throat> possible presence of the weak plan, of the soft plan, like this, and we already see this, so these allow me to go <clears throat> quickly. But as you can see, all this uh, information gives you some counterpart in the mechanism classification. That doesn't mean that the form gives you this information, but just the description. Then you have to interpret what this means and what could happen. This is uh, the, the presence of the squat column or the column reach be even the formable beams. You see? Uh, okay. Um, this is the section of the damage <clears throat> and uh, is a subdivide for vertical and horizontal structure with uh, three categories, light or no damage, medium and severe and heavy, that is uh, partial and total collapse. This is according to the EMS 198 classification, seismic classification. <clears throat> And um, this is uh, some existing short-term countermeasures that, that you can suggest in order to save the buildings, uh, like to put, uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, to remove all the parts that are unstable, repair, uh, propping or ties or, or, or whatever. 
<clears throat> okay. Uh, actually, the time is really go quickly. So this is a just a glance I can give you to this, uh, to this section. Uh, and this is important just to say that for each of these class that uh, I, uh, there is a percentage of uh, the diffusion of this uh, damage. If it's uh, minus or one third, between one third and two third of greater than two third on different element, vertical floors, stairs, roof and in field panel. I cannot give more. But this gives you a, a glance of the damage as a whole. You can use the multiple choice in this case. <clears throat> and this, as I say, the list that you uh, of the product that you want to buy at the supermarket. This is the, the list of the things that you have to see, not to forget to see. Okay? This is some other. Some other. <clears throat> you have a section to. Um, to damage to non-structural elements, okay, like um, failing of plasters, uh, failing of uh, of tiles, uh, hydraulic of the sewage system, and so on. <clears throat> okay, external risk because you can uh, you can face with external risk because, for instance, uh, you can have some other building that is no far from this, that is uh, collapsing, is uh, partially collapsed. And so you have to consider that, that even if your building is not damaged, it could be failed by the failing of another building that is uh, in the proximal area. <clears throat> Section seven is the soil and foundation. And um, this is the example, for instance, of the building that could be collapsed could be damaged by this other building that is failing. So this is, uh, <clears throat> or even information on the roads because the road uh, is full of ruins and materials and you cannot give uh, any help. So barrier on the passage and protection. <clears throat> there could be some collapse of uh, other part on another building of a, of a close, building to another. So as the soil and foundation, it depends on how these buildings are, and on rocks, are on alluvium or other soft soil or whatever. And this is something that you can, I mean, uh, classify here. This is another call, I'm sure. I, 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 I'm really surprised of how many people are looking for me today. Okay. <clears throat> As you see, for each of these, uh, there are uh, some uh, referring, uh, re reference to the Medea uh, mechanism. So usability assessment, this is the final judgment. So according to all the information that you have collected, you at the end have to give uh, a, general, uh, a general judgment on uh, risk that could be classified as low, low with the countermeasure high. And according to these, you could find for each of these some final decision, a usable building, unusable building, partially, partially usable, temporarily usable, usable, uh, unusable building, and a usable building due to external risk. <clears throat> Obviously, there is no time to go into detail of this, but this is very much this well described in the manual that I will provide with the, the form that has been translated in English, so as the manual. So if you like this kind of things, you can go into detail of this different classification of, uh, of risk and uh, different classification of the final uh, judgment that sometimes is intrinsic in the data collect in the IDES form. Some other time is not so straightforward as to be considered these are all the types from A that is usable and is fine to F and E that are not usable at all because partially collapsed to the other intermediate <clears throat> classification that could be uh, usable with, uh, with the, some, uh, some strengthening uh, or, or, or usable uh, after having some retrofitting. 
We had uh, here for each of these cases uh, some description that I skip. I want to just to show that uh, in the in the in the presentation there is a, a detailed description of these cases. <clears throat> there is no time, obviously, to read and to go into detail. I roughly gave you the difference, but this is very well described in the manual for uh, for giving you an idea of what does it mean. Of course, there are some uh, classification risk that gives you mandatory some final result. So some incongruence, incompatibility of the risk assessment with the unsafe usability sometimes are, are easily detached for, from the uh, uh, official that are uh, uh, receiving the form. Because the form, once it's compiled, is, uh, is uh, then uh, delivered to the office where there are people, quite expert, Papa and Pizza, that are the, the, the um, compiler of this uh, presentation, are basically uh, the one uh, the the people that just read and gives you the okay for the compilation that is uh, so there is at the end uh, the survey accuracy that is a sort of judgment of the accuracy uh, of the of uh, of the form. Okay, I think that uh, I have to be prepared two copies, one to the mayor and another one inside the form. <coughs> And there are some administrative uh, um, part of the of the of the form that has to be complied. Conclusion: the judgment of a practicability safety check or whatever you want to call is uh, intrusive, the substantially to experience and professionalism of the survey technician, bearing in mind that the state of emergency imposes a narrow limit to cognitive and judgmental action. <clears throat> something that I always say to people that come to follow the courses, because in order to be used on the, on the territory for this kind of action, the technician has to follow a courses uh, with some uh, exam, final exam um, of profit. Uh, is always this. I say always, look, people, uh, if you come to say that the building that has no one cracks, no one damage is uh, safe. And uh, the other building that is partially collapsed or total collapse is unsafe. And all the other is unsafe, stay at home. We don't need you. We need professionals that are capable to interpret it. a cracking path so a damaged buildings and to say if that damaged buildings is uh, still safe for people or not. So is a capability to identify the level of, uh, of vulnerability of a building that presents some damage and some cracking path. This is uh, basically what we need. So, and to do that, you have uh, to be sure not to compile, yes, to compile well the form that we just described, but you interpret it. The mechanism of collapse potentially uh, activated by that, uh, that cracking path that you can see on the buildings. And this is the final suggest that we do and the warning that we do to the people. So thank you very much. For your thank attention. you, Julio. If you have comments or questions, uh, there is a question for uh, in the chat. I don't know if it's a quick answer before we prepare for the next uh, presentation. I don't know if you have uh, an answer, uh, Julio, or a quick I one. Have, or I have to or... say that I'm uh, I'm really want to apologize, but I have to rush away now. Uh, for uh, an, in, uh, an unexpected event that uh, arose uh, <clears throat> on Friday, and uh, so I have to to go. Uh, Julio, can you can you answer this? Can you look at this question since you are not going to exactly, be here later? Exactly, exactly. That is what I wanted to do. That's why I said so. Uh, can you can you repeat without uh, leaving me all the time to read? Can you say 
again, uh, um, Eliotis, uh, which is the, 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 the thing? He, he doesn't he have a, he doesn't have a microphone. That's why he, he ah. puts the question there. Yes. Ah, okay. No, 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 no. Congratulations. Since I'm connected, I don't have a microphone, but I would like to add some diagonal cracks on the wall of some buildings appear at the angle of 45 degrees due to sheer stress failure or a brittle materials of the brick stone. This means that during the earthquake, the maximum shear stress, which appear at an angle of 45 degrees with respect to the principal stress, sometimes takes the value greater than the limit of shear. Exactly, exactly. When this happens, failure occurs. Certainly, the X-shape of the crack is due to the shear laser of the beam the forwards and backwards during the seismic action, which allows shear failure to occur two sections. Exactly, exactly. Thank, yeah, thank, thank you for your for your for the congratulations. And this is exactly what happens. You 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 make a, a beautiful snapshot of the in-plane mechanism. Basically, uh, I told you that sometimes people are non happy to speak uh, about uh, mechanism because they say it is not a kinematics, but uh, in any way the the, the cracks. Uh, make some displacement in the wall. So it depends. So it's a really semantic way to describe the two. Of course, we can say uh, the resistance mechanism, the one that is inside, in play, and uh, out of play uh, is, a, is a kinematic uh, mechanism because there is a liability of the wall. Thanks. Uh... So on to the next uh, presentation. I think I, uh, think, uh, I am the next presenter. OK. Hello. Hello. Thank, thank you very much for uh, the interesting presentations today. My name is Anna Karadzeju. I'm a doctor civil engineer and uh, researcher in Aristotle University of Thessaloniki. I now share my screen. I think you can see my screen. Am I uh, correct? Yes. Yes. Okay. I'm going to present you a, a newly developed methodology for uh, the prioritization of seismic intervention of school buildings at urban scale. Here is the outline of uh, my presentation. First of all, I will present uh, the CERA European Research Project, uh, its scope and uh, its main objectives. Afterwards, I will describe the proposed methodology and its application to the schools located in the municipality of Thessaloniki. More specifically, we will see the application of the methodology to 239 school buildings uh, that are located in Thessaloniki. Afterwards, I will uh, uh, describe uh, a comparison between the Herian proposed methodology with uh, a rapid visual screening procedure that was proposed in uh, 2014 by the Ministry of Environment in Greece, and finally some concluding remarks. This study is based on the seismic hazard and fragility models developed in the framework of uh, CERA European uh, project where a big number of partners were involved as you can see here. Among these partners, you can also see Aristotle University of Thessaloniki and our laboratory. The objectives of CERA project uh, uh, were uh, to define a local, national, and, uh, and continental scale integrated seismic risk assessment framework to build upon research efforts uh, and data collected in previous European projects like SHARE, NERA, Synergy, and CETERA, and produce an integrated assessment of seismic risk across all countries in Europe and share models and results through the FR web platform and uh, the GEMS OpenQuake uh, platform. Both platforms are uh, open and uh, this is uh, very important. Concerning our methodology, I have here some basic points in order to understand the need of this methodology. First of all, according to the Hellenic Statistical Authority, about 70% of buildings in Greece are built with no to low seismic code. This means that all these buildings were built before 1985. Upgrading and retrofitting the existing building stock to comply with modern safety requirements 
and uh, recent development of seismic codes is of course a really, really difficult task from uh, all points of view, from a technical, financial and legal point of view. Uh, but uh, a hierarchical policy for upgrading and strengthening retrofitting is still missing. We will try to fill this gap and propose a practical and efficient methodology that defines priorities for seismic intervention of Greek uh, school uh, buildings. First of all, uh, here is uh, uh, the, the first uh, stage of the proposed framework. The proposed policy is composed of two stages. This is the first one. Uh, it is more or less a first order ranking over a large building inventory and includes the following steps. First of all, all schools are mapped in GIS format with their coordinates. Afterwards, the school buildings are classified into these four categories according to the year of their construction. So we have no code schools, low code, medium, moderate and high code schools. Uh, then uh, we, uh, according to the age of construction and the code level at that time, we evaluate and map the, the design big ground acceleration. Then through a probabilistic seismic hazard analysis with open quake engine, we evaluate and map the demand big ground acceleration for uh, selected uh, return periods. Finally, we calculate uh, if the first coefficient, which is RF1, and this coefficient is the ratio between the demand to the design uh, big ground acceleration. More or less, this coefficient is a measure of PGA deficit. If RF1 is greater than unity, this means uh, that uh, uh, the demand is larger than the design acceleration and thus the structure is potentially vulnerable to earthquakes. The output of this first stage screening may result in a number of schools, we can say K schools, that should be further assessed in a second and more detailed assessment stage. At this second stage, the selected K school buildings from the previous step are examined now in more detail. We first classify the buildings according to their main attributes, which are depicted here, the material, the lateral loading resisting system, and the height. These attributes are very, very important uh, for the determination of their seismic vulnerability. Next, we calculate the distribution of damage and RF2, co, uh, RF2 ratio. I will explain what uh, this ratio is through a seismic damage analysis with open quick engine for selected return periods and hazard model. RF2 is the sum of the probabilities of existence at extensive and complete damage damage states. We will see the whole, uh, the whole procedure through its application to uh, Thessaloniki. Uh, more specifically, uh, we applied the whole methodology to all schools located in the municipality of Thessaloniki. First, all 239 school buildings are mapped in GIS format with their coordinates, as you can see here. Next, we categorize our schools into four categories, depending on the year of their construction. So we have these four categories, the no-code buildings, which means that uh, these are the buildings that were built before 1959, the low-code buildings that were built between 1959 and 1984, the moderate-code buildings that were built be uh, between 1985 and 1999, and finally, the high-code uh, buildings that were built after 1995. As you can see here, unfortunately, there are many, many buildings that will that uh, uh, were built uh, with uh, no or low code uh, provisions. Afterwards, we evaluate and map in GIS uh, the design 
big ground acceleration. At this phase, we, I should also mention, mention that we also consider the increase of the design big ground acceleration due to the importance of the, of the structure. More specifically, for school buildings that were built between 1994 and 1999, we adopt an importance factor equal to 1.5, whereas for those that were built after 1999, we consider an importance factor equal to 1.15. It is reminded that in Greece, the seismic codes before 1984 did not take into account the importance of the buildings in seismic design and risk assessment. Next, we map the demand peak ground acceleration. These uh, values result from a probabilistic seismic hazard analysis for the whole region of uh, Thessaloniki, where the school buildings are uh, located. Uh, this analysis is performed using the Open Quick Engine, uh, and uh, we evaluate these values for different return periods and map uh, them uh, here. Uh, for in this example, we uh, we picked uh, we selected these three uh, values for the return periods: the 73 years, 102 years, and 475 years. So finally, we calculate for each school building the RF1 factor, uh, which, as I said, it is the ratio between the demand peak ground acceleration and the design peak ground acceleration. For the 239 uh, school buildings, we rank these values from the highest value to the lowest value, it is observed that for return periods equal to 73 and 102 years, the majority of the school buildings have a value of RF1 approximately or equal to a unity. Uh, but uh, for uh, the scenario of 475 years, the return period, uh, for this return period, RF1 uh, for, all, for all school buildings, result greater than unity. This means uh, that the demand is higher than the design uh, big ground uh, acceleration. For this reason, we continue to the second stage with this scenario, the scenario of uh, 475 years for which all school buildings are examined again. At this second stage, uh, the approach is more detailed. The necessary input data are now uh, the main attributes of the building. Uh, this approach is very effective, actually, in reducing the inventory down to a more ma manageable size. The examined buildings are now classified according to these uh, four main attributes, the main construction material, the lateral load resisting system, the number of stories, and the seismic design. For example, uh, here we have uh, some uh, examples of uh, building categories. Uh, in this picture, we can see, for example, a concrete structure within field frames, uh, low ductility, uh, and three uh, stories. After uh, here, I have also the table uh, the, which shows the taxonomy. Uh, more or less, uh, this uh, taxonomy was also proposed in GEM. Uh, we can see that uh, level one is the level of detailing, whereas level two uh, provides additional details to describe an attribute. Uh, we have uh, uh, structures from uh, concrete, uh, masonry, uh, wood, steel structures, etc. Concerning the lateral load resisting system, we have whole systems, dual systems, moment frames, infield frames. And concerning the ductility level, we have high, medium, low, and no ductility. After uh, this uh, categorization, uh, we have this figure. Uh, these figures uh, show the most common typologies here uh, of the studied school buildings. In total, we have 31 typologies uh, in the municipality of Thessaloniki. And here we have the classification of the school buildings based on these uh, four attributes, namely material, lateral loading, resisting system, height and ductility uh, level. Uh, we can see that uh, the most common typology concerns concrete structures within field frames, low ductility and two stories. 
Concerning the main attributes, uh, it is uh, uh, clear that uh, most of the buildings uh, are uh, from reinforced concrete uh, and uh, infill frames. Uh, concerning the height, uh, almost all buildings uh, have one to three stories. And uh, concerning the ductility level, unfortunately, we can see that about 50% uh, of buildings belong to no or uh, low code category. This figure shows uh, uh, the result of the second stage. Uh, and uh, more specifically, we can see for all buildings, the distribution of damage to the considered damage states. More specifically, each building is a bar. And in each bar, you can see the distribution to the four damage states. We have the green color for the no damages, the light green for the slight, the yellow for moderate damages, the orange for extensive, and finally the red for complete damage. Uh, so we have these uh, five uh, uh, levels, let's say. At this, uh, first of all, I should say that uh, the a black line is RF2 uh, factor, which is the sum of the probabilities of exceedance at extensive at complete damage damage states. At this stage, it is also really, really important to define a threshold value that may allow us to identify the cases, the schools that uh, need uh, are in the first priority for retrofitting. The definition of this threshold, of course, depends uh, except the RF2 factor on other parameters like technical, socio socioeconomic parameters, for example, the available time, budget, etc. In this application, we consider a threshold value equal to 10%, which is the red line. School buildings having an RF2 factor equal to or higher than 10%, are considered here as a more vulnerable and need retrofitting. For example, in the current application, nine out of 239 schools are selected for retrofitting and structural strengthening. Then in order to evaluate the usefulness uh, of the proposed approach, we compare the damages that resulted with our approach, this is uh, uh, the left uh, figure, with the ones uh, that uh, resulted using a more simplified methodology, namely a rapid visual screening procedure, uh, quite familiar to engineers uh, for a first order uh, vulnerability assessment. We adopted the RVS procedure uh, in uh, that uh, proposed uh, in 2014 uh, by the Ministry of Environment uh, in Greece, uh, which classifies the buildings into these three categories, the red, the yellow, and uh, uh, the green for high, medium, and low prioritization for seismic intervention respectively. Each bar is a building uh, category. The main conclusion uh, of uh, this comparison is that this simple RVS procedure is uh, has, which is certainly associated with many uh, important uh, uncertainties, results uh, in higher vulnerability and hence damages estimation for almost all school building typologies compared to the Herian proposed methodology. Uh, of course, we should have in mind that uh, these uh, uh, procedures are different and have different assumptions. So only a general comment uh, uh, should be a uh, result. Uh, consequently, any mitigation strategy that results from this uh, simplified procedure might give uh, a misleading picture of the actual needs for uh, retrofitting. Uh, I continue with uh, uh, some concluding remarks. Uh, so we propose a reliable seismic damage assessment methodology for school buildings. There is an important progress in the treatment of the number of uncertainties involved in all steps, uh, in hazard, in side effects, exposure, vulnerability and fragility functions and risk modeling. We apply this methodology to all school buildings that uh, are located in Thessaloniki. The seismic hazard model uh, and the damages result 
from a probabilistic seismic hazard analysis and the damage analysis with open quick engine. We use the fragility gaps proposed in, in by Martins and Silva in 2020. And as a concluding remark, the Herium proposed methodology proved to give more realistic results in order to make a prioritization strategy for strengthening and retrofitting actions uh, for school buildings. Of course, there is a long way to go, but uh, we think that uh, we are uh, on a good uh, uh, track. Here I have some uh, relevant uh, publications uh, and uh, that's all. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Anna. Do you have any um, questions or comments uh, about this presentation? Okay, I, I, I have a question. Uh, Linda, did we skip one presentation or was it covered by Julio earlier? I, yes, it was covered by you know, Professor Zuccaro. Ah, okay, thank you. So I think we have uh, a last uh, presentation, Evi, or? Uh... Uh, we don't have actually a presentation. Uh, the final presentation on improving the disaster and emergency management through a harmonized and efficient system for risk assessment. Excuse me, please. Uh, it was supposed to be held by Christos Petridis, but uh, due to some health problem that he has, uh, uh, he won't be able to present it. Uh, maybe. Yes. So maybe we can share his uh, presentation uh, and go uh, directly for questions or no, how do you want to do this? I, I want to, to tell you that the basic product of this uh, research project, the crisis project, is a platform, a web platform. So Stavrula and I will uh, show you this platform online and okay. uh, explain some of the capabilities uh, of this platform. And uh, un unfortunately, we don't have a presentation from Christos, but uh, we will share with you uh, okay. the, the main uh, product of this um, uh, project. That's okay. fine, thank so you. I will, sh you're welcome, I will share my screen. Uh... Do you see my screen? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, great. So uh, this is in fact uh, the web page, not of the platform, but uh, of the of the project CRISIS. CRISIS stands for Comprehensive Risk Assessment of Basic Services and Transport Infrastructure. And uh, this is a project that is uh, supposed to cover the cross-border area between three countries, Greece, uh, North uh, Macedonia and Albania. So this project uh, concentrates only on the cross-border region of these uh, three countries. So apart from institutes from these three countries, uh, EU Center from Italy was also involved. And in fact, EU Center was the institution that developed this platform that we're going to show uh, today. A uh, few things about uh, this project we can see here. Uh, this is the, the main uh, uh, graph that shows the, the four parts of the crisis methodology. Uh, one of the most important aspects of this project was that it refers to a multi-hazard assessment. So apart from the earthquakes, that is uh, the main topic of uh, our virtual trainings, uh, landslides were also taken into account, and we will see how these have been incorporated uh, into the crisis platform. Uh, also, there was a needs assessment uh, uh, for the areas of the cross-border region and some questionnaires were disseminated to uh, services and institutions of the three countries to get uh, an, uh, an, uh, a picture of the needs that each uh, different country has. Uh, and then there was uh, the part of the risk assessment, which involved, uh, as we will see, some uh, uh, basic and important uh, uh, buildings and uh, infrastructures. And the final product was uh, the, the platform for the risk and emergency management. Uh, so I will now move to the platform. 
Uh, here is the, um, the address of the platform. Uh, one needs to have uh, some uh, specific credentials to log into this platform. So it's not uh, uh, currently open uh, for anyone who wants to, to see what, it's, what is included here. So this is the, the home page. Uh, here there is the option to download the manual which describes uh, how the plot the platform uh, is working. And then there are some um, uh, other tabs. Uh, this is the tab that refers to the exposure. Uh, first of all, I want to say that here with uh, the three different colors, we see the, um, uh, the areas uh, of the cross-border region uh, for each country. So the blue is for the, for the cross-border region of Greece, uh, the orange is for the cross-border region of North Macedonia, and the purple is for the cross-border region uh, of Albania. And we see that, the, expo that uh, the exposure that is currently included in the platform contains the hospitals, uh, which are shown with these crosses, uh, the school buildings, and uh, the main bridges. So uh, these are the buildings and infrastructures that are currently included uh, in the crisis uh, platform. Uh, the next tab refers to the seismic hazard, where we can see that uh, the results of a probabilistic seismic hazard uh, um, assessment are, are already included here. So we see that there is uh, the peak ground acceleration for three different return periods, 102 years, uh, 475 years, which is the main uh, return period return period used uh, by the codes and uh, the 1000 year return period. For example, if I click here, we can see this grid that uh, gives the PGA for the 500 year return period for the whole cross border region. And uh, this probabilistic seismic hazard um, assessment has been uh, made with the ESHM 13 uh, hazard model, which is the one that was uh, previous to the current European seismic hazard seismic hazard model of 2020. And there is also an information on the site model that has, that has been used for this analysis, uh, which is expressed by the VS30 parameter. And this parameter um, has been produced by a correlation with slope. And in fact, it is the one that is provided uh, by the European Seismological Survey, USGS. Uh, USGS provides maps for the for the whole world for VS30, and this is just the extract uh, of this map for the cross-border region. Uh, I will now move to the next um, uh, tab, which is the landslide hazard. Uh, Stavrula, can you tell us a, a few words about the landslides? Yes, okay. Uh, we have uh, incorporated the lithology and landslide susceptibility maps uh, that are taken from the harmonized uh, landslide susceptibility map of ELSUS version 2 uh, that is available for the whole Europe. So here you may see uh, the, uh, the part of this map that refers to the cross-border region of uh, uh, Albania, Macedonia, and North Macedonia and Greece. And then uh, the, we have developed a landslide uh, critical acceleration map uh, that is uh, derived mainly based on expert judgment and uh, uh, hazardous prescriptions. And uh, based on this uh, landslide critical acceleration and uh, specifically the um, uh, seismic hazards uh, scenarios, we have developed some uh, specific scenarios for the earthquake uh, triggered landslides based uh, on specific uh, empirical uh, equations that relate the PGA uh, to the PGT, the permanent ground displacement. So we have developed two different uh, uh, scenarios uh, for the landslides, for the earthquake triggered landslides for two different uh, return periods that are related mainly to the earthquake occurrence, that is the 475 years and the 975 uh, years. Uh, so uh, this is for the last slide hazard. And uh, then uh, we also made some uh, uh, risk uh, calculations uh, regarding the landslides. So Evie, can you move also to the... Yes, that's it. 
Okay. Uh, regarding uh, the, uh, the asset level, so the schools and hospitals, uh, we have developed a different approach that is based on, uh, uh, on the harmonized susceptibility map uh, uh, that Evi already uh, showed to you, and uh, uh, an index-based uh, methodology uh, that is a quite uh, uh, methodology that is based mainly on empirical data and expert judgment that is based on specific weightings and factors uh, that relate uh, uh, different uh, vulnerability parameters uh, with the damage and losses. Uh, so for the schools and hospitals who use this uh, empirical uh, expert judgment methodology that is uh, quite uh, semi-quantitative, not not fully quantitative. Uh, while for the bridges, uh, we used uh, the scenarios uh, already developed uh, or the hazard for the, for the uh, seismically induced landslides. And we used the um, hazardous fragility curves uh, to develop the, the these risk maps that are shown here for again for the two different scenarios for the 475 years and the 975 years. Um, I think uh, that's the most. So we characterize the build the bridges with a different color. Uh, um, if, you, if you see the legends, you may also see what this color means. Uh, I think uh, we have it's in the second tab here. Yes. Okay. So here are the uh, qualitative uh, characterization of the risk in terms of very low, low, medium, high, very high. And uh, for the bridges, we have also some uh, quantitative characterization as you see here. Uh, similar results are given also for the uh, earthquake scenarios. Uh, here there are uh, 11 historical scenarios that, that are already computed and included uh, in the uh, platform. So one can select one of these scenarios and uh, immediately get the expected damages in terms of uh, probabilities of being in each one of the five damage states. A damage level one is the lowest and damage level five is the highest. So uh, for example, here we can see for each one of the uh, components of the exposure of the exposure model, what is the estimated uh, uh, probabilities uh, for the for each damage state. Uh, Okay, and uh, another option that is available is that one can um, uh, insert the, the necessary details for a real-time scenario. For example, one can uh, select uh, a, an earthquake of a specific magnitude, DG 6.5. Uh, the depth, let's say 10 kilometers, uh, the coordinates of the epicenter can be uh, either manually uh, inserted or we can select uh, the location on the map. Select on map, let's say here, for example. And then if we press calculate, uh, this uh, scenario is uh, calculated. Uh, a specific uh, VES30 model is used uh, along with the ground motion prediction equation. And here at the bottom, we can see the results for all the scenarios that we have uh, uh, manually computed. So for each one of the buildings, uh, the schools, the hospitals, and the bridges, we can get uh, the respective uh, probabilities um, of being in each uh, damaged state. Uh, on the right, there are different menus where one can select the layers that uh, uh, we want to, to see each time. Um, here is the legend where all the different colors are explained in terms of uh, probabilities. Uh, if we use this icon, we can get uh, the specific uh, information for each one of the of the assets that are included in the exposure model. And one final uh, option that is available in this platform, which is quite um, uh, innovative, is this uh, routing option where one can define in the um, cross-border region a start and a destination point. So I will select something uh, 
now let's say we are here so uh, let's say that this is the starting point and this is the destination point for example we want to see uh, how one can get from a point of interest to the nearest hospital let's say and then we select uh, the scenario. This can be either one historic or one that we have calculated in real time. And then if we press this create route, uh, the platform can calculate the fastest route to go from the start point uh, to the destination point, uh, taking into account if some bridges have um, collapsed or are so damaged that uh, they cannot be used. Um, so uh, here there was not a route created because the points that I, that I selected were probably not uh, uh, the best ones. But in any case, uh, this works and uh, in fact can provide the best uh, route to, to go from the point of interest to the destination point. So this was more or less the, the crisis platform. I, th I think that it is a good example to see how all these things that we are interested in uh, uh, within ISTOS can be represented uh, in an online platform and can actually be used by the um, uh, authorities for the planning uh, of uh, the pre and post earthquake uh, actions. Thank you very much. Uh, very interesting, obviously. Um, I don't know if we have any questions or comments either for this uh, mentioned by uh, Evi and Stavrula or from uh, any previous uh, uh, presentations. If, if uh, of course, uh, Julia is not here, but maybe Linda can uh, answer if there are any questions or any comments that anyone wants to add. Um, no, I have no questions. Okay, I think uh, everybody's ready for lunch. Maybe you don't. Uh, I, we answer some questions during the presentation, so it seems that uh, uh, at least the the first uh, uh, ones uh, were answered. Uh, I'm sure there is going to be some more which uh, uh, we can discuss either in. Uh, uh, during our other meetings of ISTOS, or definitely uh, through email, uh, we can uh, always ask uh, uh, the presenters or, or we can uh, contact them uh, for comments. Um, I think the, all, the, all the presentations, obviously, we are uh, of good quality. So we want to thank our uh, presenters for the time that they invested in preparing those and uh, sharing the, the information with us. Uh, I, I know we were in a rush in some of the presentations, so I have to apologize for this because we had this uh, technical uh, issue at the beginning and we had a little delay uh, starting the uh, presentations. So um, if there are no other comments, uh, I, I want to thank everybody for the presentations. Thank everybody for the participation. And uh, as I said, this was uh, the last of a series of uh, virtual trainings, which were offered in uh, under the ISTOS project. Uh, all these uh, presentations and uh, also the recordings are going to be posted on the uh, Web website of uh, of the project, and uh, of course you are welcome to uh, listen or to see the presentations. And then, of course, uh, if you have questions, you can always uh, contact us. But if you have any last comments, that uh, before we go, no. we continue <laughs> the next step now. Yes. So I will be in touch uh, very soon, actually, for what we have discussed earlier. OK. All right. Thank you very much. Thank uh, you very I much. Will see you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you all.
Nicola, θέλεις να μείνεις άλλο λεπτό, Νικόλα. Φέβαια. Να σου πω, μία ρημένα λεπτό. Γεια σας, κύριε Πιτουλάκη. Γεια σου, Νικόλα. Ε, σου έστειλα κάτι... Ναι, το είδα, θα το δω. Και το κουβέντος και με τον Πέτρο. Ε, να προχωράμε, βρε Κώστα μου, γιατί... Βρε Κώστα, ναι. ναι. Γιατί... Για να είμαι ειλικρινής. Όλα, γιατί είναι... ξέρει ο χρόνο θα περάσει και θα μείνουμε στη μέση, κατάλαβε. Για να είμαι ειλικρινή, εγώ το είχα, το είχα κυνηγήσει και είχα φτάσει και με μίλησα και με τη Σιλβάνα. Μιλήσαμε και με τη Ζέζα το πρωί. ότι η Σιλβάνα, τέλο πάντων, πρώτη προέκυψε κάτι προσωπικό και χάθηκε για ένα αρκετό μεγάλο διάστημα. Τώρα επανήλθε πίσω, γι' αυτό κατάφερα και τα μάζεψα. Ενώ αυτή, αυτή τη βάση δεν την έχω μαζέψει όλοι μαζί. Ε, τώρα ε, υπολογίζω την άλλη εβδομάδα να βρεθούμε μαζί του. Για να μου απαντήσουν ή μέσα αυτή τη βδομάδα την Παρασκευή, πιθανόν για να απαντηθούν και αυτά που μου στείλατε, διότι τα έχω δει αυτά και θέλω λίγο να τα μιλήσω μαζί του. Άρα, ελπίζω ότι την άλλη εβδομάδα θα έχουμε και τι απαντήσει, αλλά και το πώ προχωράμε. Δηλαδή, έχουμε πει ότι θα δημιουργηθεί μια ομάδα από εμά το γεωλογικό, το CYS, και θα πάμε στο ETEC, στο οποίο ETEC θα ζητήσουμε να δημιουργηθεί μια ad hoc επιτροπή, στην οποία εσεί θα είστε ω εξωτερικό. Ε, 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 ναι, κάπω α πούμε, ω εξωτερικό συμμετέχοντα, α πούμε, στην Επιτροπή και η οποία θα εξετάσει τη δημιουργία του νέου σεισμικού χάρτη. Και στην Επιτροπή αυτή θα είναι μέσα, θα είμαστε και εμεί και ο CYS και το γεωλογικό και ο Κρίστη και εμεί ω ιστό ενώ τα λέω εμεί. Ε, και και, και θα, θα είναι ατχόκουτο ώστε να μπορούμε να, να καλέσουμε και εσά του εξωτερικού συνεργάτε. Ε, 